There is not a cloud in the sky above Amon Carter Stadium on the TCU campus today in Fort Worth. Got to be the best special teams in America. Aaron Glenn, the nation's leading punt returner. Leela McElroy, the nation's leading kickoff returner. And after winning the toss, a and does receive. This is Leland McElroy. And the Beaumont freshman finally up to the 25-yard line, a return of 22. And so sophomore quarterback Corey Pullig will go to work. Out of Deer Park, great size at 6'3", 199. He has turned his and his team's seasons around after the disappointing loss at Oklahoma. Nations Bank starting offensive unit for A&M. Tony Harrison last week became the all-time Aggie receiving yardage leader, 1,416 for his career. And up front, Todd Matheson gets a start at right guard. The injured freshman Calvin Collins with a bruised shoulder may see some action, but Matheson, a junior from Weatherford, gets the start today. And out of the eye, not much on first down for Greg Hill. Greg Hill, the starter at tailback today, and not Rodney Thomas, the Aggies rushing leader. Cliff Gross is the fullback and perhaps one yard for Greg Hill. Nations Bank defensive starters for TCU. Royal West, already the TCU single season record holder with nine sacks. He has 29 quarterback pressures this year, just a junior. Lenoy Jones, just a sophomore, and he is one of their best pass rushers. Greg Evans, seven interceptions last year, one this year. To the air for the first time, caught by Harrison who is dragged down but with an Aggie first down near the 39, a pickup of 12. Texas Christian University has come into this game with a little bit different philosophy than last week against the University of Texas. They dropped their uh, secondary people, had double coverage on the outside receivers today. They're starting out with seven and eight people inside to stop the run against uh, Texas A&M. And when you stop the run of A&M, you have accomplished something. Number two rushing attack in the league, number 15 in the nation at 235 yards per game. Again, pull it to the air, wide open over the middle. And another Aggie first down near the 30 of TCU. The catch made by Hayward Clay, a backup tight end for 30. Hayward Clay comes across uh, from the opposite side of the field in that uh, shallow zone. We're looking right at Pulley. He looks down, sees him open, and throws the ball into a wide cavity that was created when the secondary did the drops on the outside. The linebacker stayed tight on the play action fake. Corey Pulley, two for two through the air, just the fourth catch this year by Clay. And through the middle goes Hill. He's hit by Reggie Anderson. But he is inside the Frog 30 to the 29-yard line. Reggie Anderson has uh, moved back into the top tackler on the uh, TCU team. He led it uh, year before last, before he was injured. Came back this year, and he's been a very, very fine force for them on their defense, particularly against the run. So captain from Austin, injured all last year, leading tackler two years ago and again this year. on the roll and a flag down the catch is made by Brian Mitchell the flanker inside the TCU 20 flag thrown as the catch was made for 13 yards well that could be a couple of things could be holding on the defensive back could be the offense receiver pushing off we'll see what the official has to say and defensive holding Rogers Redding is the referee and the rest of his SWC officiating crew today. We have holding against the defense. The penalty is declined because of the completed pass. The yardage is good for a first down. And the first down is at the Frog 15 yard line. Reggie Anderson putting up big numbers again this year 110 tackles to lead the team two years ago a severe knee injury last year did not play but averaging nearly 13 stops per game as a junior and this is a TCU defense that's better than a lot of people realize number two overall in the Southwest Conference two tight ends out of the eye 
Aggies marching after the opening kick of the game. Greg Hill spins to the 12. And gang tackle there by Anderson, Lenoy Jones. Reggie Anderson has uh, excellent speed, and uh, he, he wraps up very well. I've noticed him a couple of times this year. Watch him flow to the ball, keeps his eye on the ball carrier. He's in inside, outside position. Now plant the foot, ready to make the tackle. Great uh, shot on him, uh, moving across laterally, making the stop. And Bell Holtz from cornerback also up to help. On second down, play action. Ford again rolling, the flag is down, and it's batted away, intended for Cliff Gross. Charles McWilliams, the free safety, made the deflection. And our first look at the Dr. Pepper Roundup today, big one at Michigan. A lot of people think Michigan can upset undefeated. Once tied Ohio State, and they lead in the second quarter. Florida already 21-0 in the first over Vanderbilt. Rivalry between Clemson and South Carolina, 3-3. We have offside against the defense. The player lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, just the way R.C. Slocum would draw off his opening offensive possession of the day. You do not like to see uh, a great running team have a second and one to make their first down inside the 10-yard uh, line. If, particularly if you're from TCU. We'll call this a short two on second down. Two tight ends again. Mitchell in motion. And Greg Hill gets the call and turned away as he reaches the seven by Lenoy Jones. The outside linebacker, just 198 pounds, bringing down Hill. Hill, of course, started this season serving a five-game suspension which began with the Cotton Bowl last year, but already number three in A&M history with better than 3,012 rushing yards. Well, they've had some great uh, runners down there in the last uh, many years, including John David Crow and others. They still need those two yards for the first. On third down, and Greg Hill has him and sets up a first and goal from the three. And not anything fancy. Straight through the middle, hit by Greg Evans, the strong safety. It makes it very, very difficult on a defensive team when you have a pulley that can throw the ball that well, and then you've got the runners down on the goal line. Uh, it's very difficult to set the kind of defense that will stop both. Bill, one of three backs for AM, any of whom would no doubt be the number one back on just about any team in America. He'll stack up at the two this time, and they just continue to test that crowded defensive middle for TCU. Evans and Anderson on the stop. Well, that's an excellent play down on the two-yard line. Uh, you'll see a really strong charge, and Anderson coming in, turning the blocker around, and uh, you got people around. you got to have folks around to stop Greg Hill and uh, those running backs from Texas A&M. So right at the two on second and goal. Five minutes gone, first quarter opening drive of the day for a and Bullock to the end zone and wide open. James McKeon for his fourth touchdown of the year. That's on just eight total catches this year. He is among the most productive receivers in America, and he's got AM up 6 0. That's what I was talking about a moment ago. When you get down inside the five yard line against this Aggie team, you set your defense to stop the run, and the pass is going to be open. You set it to stop the pass, and they'll run it right down your throat. So it's a real problem. Barry Venatuli is 42 of 42 for the year, and add one to that, 7 to nothing a &M. In his career, and he's a junior, McKeon has caught now 20 passes, six for touchdown. This is an excellently conceived play down on the goal line. A fake to Greg Hill. Greg Hill holds the linebackers, and no one can get out on the tight end who's running free in the end zone. What's the fake? Now Hill steps inside. Corey uh, Pulley drops the ball out in the flat. 
Just over five minutes to get AM on the board. It's where the careers of naval officers are launched and where pleasure boaters come to cast away from it all. But Annapolis, Maryland is also a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank, which enables coastal properties to call on a depth of experience in financing, offers the overstreets everything from equity loans to mutual funds, and gives people a bank that puts greater financial power at their command. In Annapolis and in 1,900 other communities throughout our nation. Ford announces the news truck buyers have been waiting for. The best lease ever on Ford F-Series pickups. Now you can lease America's number one pickup, Ford F-Series, for $229 per month for 24 months, but only for a limited time. These trucks are loaded with features including driver's side airbag, V8 engine, automatic transmission, air conditioning, and the XLT package. Get the best of terms on the best-selling trucks in America. Drive home this loaded F-Series XLT for $229 per month. See your Ford dealer now. Dr. Pepper, the taste you've been looking for. They don't throw to James McKeon all that often, but when they do, he is generally in the end zone, or he gets it. Well, with their running game, it uh, will free up your tight end about 90% of the time, particularly on short yardage. And Terry Venetulius drives this one eight yards deep to Jimmy Oliver, who takes a knee in the Frogs under Max Naki's leadership. Will go from their 20. Naki the sophomore from McKinney. Very high percentage passer. 12 touchdowns and 13 interceptions on the year. 59%. And fourth in the conference in total offense at 212 yards per game. Nations Bank starters for TCU. John Oglesby off a career high 97 yards on the ground at Texas last week. And their top receiver as well with 46 catches. Boyd Milby heading a very big, effective offensive line. They don't allow many sacks, but they will be pressured today. Typical short drop and short pass on first down, and it's Andre Davis, the tailback, for a first down out of bounds at the 32, a pickup of 12. And the defensive unit, the wrecking crew for A&M, rated number four in America, led by Sam Adams, All-American, as a junior at the left end, nine and a half sacks, a career 19 and a half sacks for Sam. When the year began, they looked at Antonio Shorter as a question mark. As the year is ending, they look at him as a major plus. And Aaron Glenn may be the best coverage cornerback in America. He returned an interception for 40 yards and a touchdown against Louisville last week. Naki with the give to Oglesby, who is racked up right at the line of scrimmage by the nose tackle, Lance Teichelman. And at Ann Arbor, Michigan, the Wolverines add a touchdown, and Ohio State now down 14 up. Teichelman's had a little bit of an injury this week, and so the coaches are anxious to see if he can hold up in there. In fact, Adams, if worse comes to worst, at a thin nose guard position, may end up in the middle himself. They of course, hope to avoid having to make that switch. No gain, second and ten. Naki on an option pitch, and again stacked for no gain is Oglesby. Jason Atkinson, inside linebacker, joined by 37 Larry Jackson for that resounding hit, and it's third and 11. A down the line option. Atkinson reads it very, very well. Watch him sprint outside. He knows where he has to get. It's a down the line, so there's no fullback fake. He's either going to take the quarterback or the pitch man. He stays inside out on both of them. It's a slick read from a, a linebacker's position. Third and long. TCU not bad converting third downs this year. Davis the setback. Oglesby is slot left. And Eric England unloads on Naki as the pass is intercepted by Aaron Glenn. And there is 
the wrecking crew at its best on both ends, the pressure and the pick the third of the year for Glenn. Well, you can look at this picture and see exactly what happened. There's tremendous pressure coming, and he gets hit just as he lets the ball loose. Had to let it go high, and Aaron picked it off. Richard Woodley. Watch him keep his eye on the ball, Dave. All oh, Woodley that's can laying do, out. All Woodley can do is, is from a prone position, watch the play by Glenn. And the Aggies now plus 12 in takeaway giveaway ratio this year. So they start from their 43 yard line and pull it deep over the middle. Caught. And Harrison is blasted, but is inside the TCU 35 to the 31, 24 yards. He paid for it, but Harrison made the catch. Tony Harrison just uh, makes a straight down the line, straight down the field, and turns inside into that uh, open zone. Fortunately, the uh, safeties were right there. It could have been six. Boy, five out of five, 83 in the score for Pullett. Last week, 14 of 20, career-high three touchdowns against the Cardinals. the 33 yard line on first down deep again in single coverage quarter of the end zone and out of the end zone for Brian Mitchell Calvin Jones the left corner had the coverage on Mitchell and pulling finally misses one but not by a whole lot well that was a good throw you're not going to get it intercepted if you throw it like that he gets his feet under him lets the ball go throws it down to the corner of the end zone it's going to be a touchdown or it's going to be slightly out of bounds and it was out hey he has improved an awful lot he's not the same guy not at all he is uh, very accurate and very poised and confident McElroy in the game breakaway threat running and receiving On a blitz comes Anderson, and he makes Pulig on low very early and behind Tony Harrison. Straight linebacker blitz. Uh, wasn't a full blitz. Linebacker ran through. What happened is the guard and the tackle blocked out on their respective men, left a wide gap. He just runs through, unblocked, and puts pressure on the quarterback. The Aggies today can tie the all-time longest winning streak in the SWC. That was Texas 21 straight, 1968 through 71 that streak ending in Little Rock against Arkansas at the dawn of the wishbone era. Hey, that's quite an accomplishment. That's very difficult to do. And if they win today, they can break the record against Texas Thursday night. Caught at the 15 by Harrison. And another AM first down, 17 yards, pulling to Harrison. Perfect example of a timed route. You hear people talk about time route. Watch the receiver in the lower corner. Watch the quarterback throw. The receiver hasn't even turned his head back. Look at the spot. Boy, that, that is execution at its best. Harrison finally broke that career record last week, but he had a, a long wait to do so. He thought on two previous occasions he had it, and those plays called back because of penalties. And then he finally got it, but not a very productive day. But this one has started off to be enormous for him. Seven and a half minutes, first quarter. Pitch to Hill. Gross out in front for the block. And Greg Hill is at the lip of the cup inside the one. He's not happy. He wanted in the end zone on that one. 15 yards for Hill. Well, it's not any play that's new. It's one that uh, Texas A&M has been running for a long time. Turn it and pitch it to a great running back. Get people on the perimeter. Watch that block by the fullback. Tremendous job. Good job pursuit by the defense and a good low tackle to keep him from getting in the end zone. But they're down on the line of scrimmage and the TCU players down as well. And we can't pick up a number of the injured Horn Frog. I believe it's Calvin Jones, Dave. That's uh, the left cornerback, a senior from Lamarck, Texas. One of 14 Horn Frog seniors. We'll be back in Fort Worth in a moment. To make Friends Fly Free perfectly clear, our lawyer insisted on doing this commercial. Friends Fly Free is exemplary for migratory commerce. 
prior procurement is not essential and remuneration is made for vouchers held in abeyance. One caveat, both parties enter the contract concurrently. In short, Friends Fly Free minimizes the aforementioned expenditures. Or rather, the fiduciary requirements remitted will invariably and in no uncertain terms compare favorably... Friends Fly Free on Southwest Airlines. It's just plain smart. Why Farm Bureau Insurance? Our agent helps us get the right coverage. So we're always protected. When you have a claim, Farm Bureau works hard to help you get things back to normal. They can help you with a plan to make your retirement years great years. Helping you is what we do best. That's why people across America, from every walk of life, depend on Farm Bureau Insurance. Americans like you. For auto, home, and life, call your local Farm Bureau today. Well, you see right there, they're bringing the stretcher out as uh, the injured horn frog continues to get some medical attention after the tackle at the one-yard line against Greg Hill of the Aggies. And it's very quiet in Eamon Carter Stadium. Seven minutes and 24 seconds in the first quarter. And it is number 13, Calvin Jones, who is being loaded onto the stretcher. Well, trainers and doctors uh, are tremendous. They take every precaution in the world. Uh, he did get uh, a pretty good lick. Uh, it was sort of a falling lick by Greg Hill, which picked his momentum up. But uh, they're being very uh, precautious about this and should be. Even the Aggies now uh, gathered near the 20 yard line and kind of keeping a respectful distance but showing their interest and their concern as well about Calvin Jones on their side. Watch the left hand uh, corner of your screen. Watch this. Boy he got the hip by Greg Hill at full speed right up around the, the neck area. Another good look at it. Very scary to see any blow delivered by a guy who's coming at full speed to a guy who is virtually stationary as Calvin Jones unfortunately was at that time. Right. The velocity picks up as he was hit by the other players, so that increased uh, Greg Hill's velocity. And then, of course, uh, Calvin was uh, coming in at a very strong speed himself. And the adhesive tape applied to make that helmet completely motionless. That's a precautionary measure that uh, so that there's no movement uh, of the neck or even the spinal cord and that goes back to what I was talking about a moment ago. They'll be putting him in an air body cast as well there so that there'll be no movement and to make sure that uh, there's not any problems in uh, transporting him. Well Calvin Jones had been very active until that play. Two unassisted tackles, two assists. And an ovation from Aggie and Horn Frog fans alike as he is carried off the field here at Eamon Carter. He's moved both uh, extremities uh, while he was lying there, so that's a good sign. Well, of course, when we find out, you'll find out on the, what they say about the injury to Jones. And Pat Sullivan now turns his attention to what he hopes will be a goal line stand. It's first and goal from the one for AM, and m And it's now 21-0 Michigan trying to salvage their season. And the Aggies, who have been flawless so far in the first 7.36 of this ball game, can go up 14-0. They're still waiting for uh, the uh, 
physicians and trainers to uh, uh, take Calvin uh, completely off uh, the end of the stadium. He's just about out of there now, and then they will resume play as soon as that takes place. And that's right now. Detron Smith checks in at fullback. He'll still the tailback. And it's Greg Hill, and it's another Aggie touchdown. Well, after getting it close, down inside the one, only right that Hill should finish the job. And it's 13 to nothing, ain't it? And Atulius for another extra point out of the hold of Stormy Case. Snap from Daryl Red, and the kick is good. Greg Hill, of course, will get the football. Uh, this is an old goal line play. Drive the offensive lineman off of the line of scrimmage and then uh, go airborne. He just rolls over the bodies of uh, his teammates and TCU and falls into the end zone. What's this block on Detron Smith? This what makes a play on the goal line work. Linebacker coming in, trying to make the stop, and it's on TCU's best linebacker. Fifth touchdown of the year for Hill, 14-0 Aggies. You can see it in their eyes. They're pushing to raise the benchmark of quality. And after three million miles of testing, the people of Exxon know Phase 4 gasoline offers the highest level of engine cleaning, all for one reason. For proven high performance, you can rely on. Let the tiger set you free. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. Let me take you through the pros and cons of staying at La Quinta. Pro, free local phone calls. Pro, free continental breakfast for people on the go. Pro, modest rates that fit your budget. Con, La Quinta. It's hard to pronounce. Let's review. Pro, 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 con. Need I say more? La Quinta. You're not staying at a hotel. You're staying with us. It's about an hour, each way. But somehow in my Taurus, I don't mind. I've never liked storms. Now I don't really notice them much. It seems like everything's getting more streamlined. Wish I could say the same for myself. For so many people, for so many reasons, Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America. Detron Smith, sophomore from Lake Highlands in Dallas in high school as a senior, averaged 10 pancake blocks a game. That's where you put your guy on his back 10 times a game as a senior. Well, he's a very tough individual, but he's a very good running back as well. But, of course, when you have a crew of running backs like Texas A&M, Detron Smith becomes a primary blocker. Richard Woodley takes a knee. So now down 14 to nothing, Pat Sullivan changing quarterbacks. After Max Naki was unable to move him, he goes to Scott McLeod, a sophomore like Naki, is from Jackson, Mississippi. And he hadn't played a whole lot this year. 15 for 26, 154 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Excellent student on the Dean's list and the former Mississippi High School Academic Athlete of the Year. And a flag down as McLeod takes the blind bootleg for about six or seven yards out to the 27. We wait for the indication. What do you make of that change that quickly by Selma? Well, I, I'm a little bit surprised uh, this uh, early in the game, unless he's just trying to get something happening. Also, you got to go back. If you'll remember last week, TCU threw three consecutive interceptions on three series. Naki comes out, throws an interception, which builds their uh, difference between uh, the turnovers, plus and minuses, to 11 for the year. That's over one a game. 
So I think Pat is trying to stay away from that uh, turnover syndrome that could put them deeper into the hole. Call was defensive offsides, and they take the play, which was good for eight yards. give for no gain at best that they may lose one here to John Oglesby hit immediately by Jason Atkinson and Sam Adams and we'll see where they will mark his progress right about at the line of scrimmage to bring up third and short we have a very preliminary report on Calvin Jones the injured Horn Frogs and it sounds pretty good. I mean, under the circumstances, a concussion. There's no mention of anything worse than a concussion. He will be evaluated, and uh, we expect to get further information. That's what we know now. Andre Davis for a loss by Atkinson, and late flags after the tackle, which may be face masking. Boy, but you saw the quick closing ability of Atkinson. Senior from Westfield High School in Houston, and it is a mark off against a &M. This is another TCU uh, uh, situation where they had a chance to make the first down, but uh, end up losing yardage. They may get it uh, if it's a, through a face pass. It looks like it is. Uh, the yardage is sufficient for a first down. First down. Face mask can be five or 15 yards, and usually when you see it involved in the tackle, it's the big one, but this is the short five-yard mark off here. Aggies nationally, number two pass efficiency defense, number four total, and scoring defense, and number 20 against the run. They are surprised themselves at those numbers. They did not expect this defense to be as good as theirs in the past. McLeod under pressure, and that ball partially deflected. Sam Adams uh, with a great power rush. He's back there by the time the quarterback sets up. Now that is power rush at its best. He's going to come off that line of scrimmage when the ball snaps, and he is moving forward. He's not stepping to the right, not stepping to the left, and he's right in the quarterback's face. Adams has made it all the way down to the final four candidates for the Lombardi Award. Justly deserved. but it's Davis on the ground. Andre Davis, the leading frog rusher, picks up about six to the 38. Larry Jackson inside backer and Antonio Shorter, the outside backer on the stop and flags down as a difference of opinion between Adams and Clifford Barnes, among others. Barnes, 61 for TCU, is quickly separated. Neither coach will uh, like uh, that type of action, I can assure you. I saw F. R.C. step toward the line of scrimmage there uh, as he was uh, very upset that that took place, and also uh, Pat Sullivan moved close to the sideline. We have a dead ball, personal foul against the defense. Dead ball, personal foul against the offense. Penalties offset. Both players are ejected. Wow. Yep. Well, Clifford Barnes is a backup guard. Sam Adams now, is an All-American. Think about the scenario here. If Tackleman goes down, they were going to move Sam Adams inside. Now Sam Adams is off the field. And R.C. Slocum wants to know why. Hardly an equitable exchange, but those were the players involved in the altercation, and they are out of this game. Numbers for Adams tops among all defenders for AM in tackles and pressures in sacks. Nine tackles for a loss. He has had at least seven tackles in every game. He is good enough that they wonder whether he might come out for the NFL draft after this his junior year. They hope not, obviously, but he has that type of first-round talent that it's something that he's having to consider, at least. But he takes the rest of the day off. And that eliminates, for Pat Sullivan, the number one problem that they have to face on that defensive side of the ball. Replacement, no matter how good
good a day he has cannot be another Sam Adams. Third and four, incomplete. In the general area of Andre Davis and the fired up Aggies came with all they had led by Atkinson on the blitz. And that uh, little screen didn't fool anyone. The Aggies were there just as quickly as the screen man was there. So on the punt, Kevin Cordesman. And Aaron Glenn, the nation's leading punt returner. Had an unbelievable 18 plus yards per game. This is an outstanding kick. Spiral, Spiral, to run. Spiral came down at the 10. Glenn comes down at the 22. Good coverage. It went 52 yards. The return by Glenn went 12. And there is another get together being broken up. I don't think anybody will be tossed on this one. This one uh, stopped before it really got started. Well, the officials set uh, tempo for that uh, type of action uh, in uh, removing two players from the game. That'll make the others think uh, pretty seriously about uh, any altercation. The Aggie defensive line, Adams, Teichelman, and England combining for 175 tackles, 25 for a loss, 15 sacks, and they've recovered five fumbles. One of the best units in the nation, Aggies from their 22-yard line. Rodney Thomas, who did not start, is in the game. He goes up the middle and is hit at the 30-yard line by Evans and Anderson. Thomas, their leading rusher and number two in the conference at 849 on the year. 12 touchdowns, 5.3 yards per carry. What a luxury when you have him, but you don't have to start him. Well, there's not many schools in the country that have that kind of luxury with uh, three musketeers that can beat you. Any one of them can beat you. He got him nine yards. Mitchell in motion on second and one. And that will not be enough for a first. Thomas hit immediately by Royal West. 97, the leader of the TCU defensive front, and he's joined by Rico Wesley, who has taken Jones' spot at left cornerback. Royal West has had 78 tackles uh, this year, 16 for losses. That's uh, an incredible record. He's had nine sacks and one uh, outstanding statistic he's had 34 pressures against opposing quarterback that means he's getting in the uh, backfield and causing some havoc third and two Thomas for a loss at the 26 hit by Galen Hyder a true freshman from Longview for the biggest stop of the day so far by the Frogs this play uh, really never materialized. You have people inside knocking off the blocking guard, number 55, and they had no one to block uh, when uh, the play materialized on the uh, right-hand side of the screen. Hyder, great speed, better than 4'8 in the 40, and for the first time today, Aggies' James Bennett will punt, and he gets off an excellent kick as well, taken at the 27-yard line. Very short return for Richard Woodley of two yards. The punt traveled 46 yards. R.C. Slocum officially took over as a head coach at Texas A&M in 1989, but his debut was actually the previous season. On November 19, 1988, allegations had surfaced. Jackie Sherrill suspended himself as the head coach that day. And it was a big day for Darren Lewis, the All-American running back, as the Aggies shut out TCU 18 to nothing with R.C. Slocum in a preview of things to come, taking over for Sherrill as head coach that day. Draw play, Davis, a lot of room. Andre Davis to midfield. As they made the Aggies pay for all that quick defensive pressure, Davis goes 22 yards. Chased down by the safety, Michael Hendricks. 
Well, we said at the outset that uh, Coach Sullivan had to use everything in the playbook. This is a draw play that's well blocked, but better run. The running back makes the right cut, cuts back to his right, and uh, picks up about 15 or 20 yards. Well, when Andre Davis plays well, TCU generally wins. 100 yards in four games this year, all four victories for the Frogs. When he's under 100, they are 0-6. And again to the deepest part of the playbook. After faking the reverse, the pass is caught fairly in bounds at the 37 for 12 yards by Jimmy Oliver. Now that came off the back page of the playbook. <laughs> but uh, let's use it anyway. Watch how it sets up. Fake and fake to the wide receiver coming around. Holds the secondary. And this is a great throw. Left-hander puts it right on the money. Well, Sullivan, who has devised what you have termed a, a great quarterback's offense, as a former Heisman Trophy winning quarterback at Auburn, he's got his team set up at last in AM territory. Final 220 of the first quarter, flag is down. Davis is down after a pickup of two. Texas AM was in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped, but we don't know if they were pulled off sides. They were not. Antonio Shorter. Five yard mark off will get him inside the 35. We have offside against the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. We will replay first down. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Texas A&M University, Texas Christian University, the Southwest Conference, and Raycom Incorporated, and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without prior written consent is forbidden. McLeod in a crowd intended for Woodley. Good coverage by Ray Mickens. And incomplete second and five. That was an interesting play. Uh, that ball was thrown really into dangerous territory. Uh, you really probably better keep the ball on the outside against these linebackers in this secondary. You throw it inside like that, there's too many people that can pick it off or it can be tipped. John Washington in the game. Top of your screen wide left. Woodley comes right. Davis. Off tackle just inside the 30. It will be third and about two. Andre, just 180 pounds, takes a beating. But very durable. He replaced the injured Derek Colors in their opening loss to Oklahoma. Colors' injury played career, missing another season, but Davis has stepped into the gap and played extremely well. Lance Tackleman looks uh, strong in there. He's not. Uh, being uh, held back from playing very well with that injury, whatever it might be. Offset eye and three wide outs, and the Aggies show the whole maximum blitz. Davis, no first down. Junior White, the last line of defense at free safety, wrapped him up a yard shy. And if White didn't get him, Davis might have taken that one the whole way. That's a great uh, move by the secondary. Watch the block down. That's a, that's a natural thing. You got a linebacker coming, block down, hit the ball carry outside, but right there's the secondary. You can see how close they're playing to the line of scrimmage. So Cordesman, it was 11 of 15 last week, his career-long 45-yarder at Austin. We'll try to better that one by one. Breeze has picked up just a little bit, but it's sort of a side breeze. It's not enough to be significant. And he's got plenty of leg, and he has another career best. 46-yarder for Kevin Cordesman as TCU on the board with 29 seconds in the first quarter. Texas A&M gunning for the third consecutive clean sweep of the Southwest Conference. That's never happened. A game back is Texas. And, of course, they meet at Kyle Field Thursday night. Texas Tech at San Antonio tonight against Houston, hoping to wrap up the bowl bid with their sixth win of the year. 
Baylor in Texas also today. Thinking bowl if they can beat the Longhorns if Texas wins and A&M wins they will play for the Cotton Bowl berth Thanksgiving night. And the Frogs were thinking bowl until their loss in Lubbock two weeks ago. They came into that game uh, four and four with an opportunity to go forward uh, exactly where Pat wanted them to be. And with three seconds seconds to go in the half, the score uh, was eight points uh, in favor of uh, TCU. Then uh, Mr. Hill made the great catch and evened it up. And then it's been downhill ever since. TCU. And you could say that as young as they are, maybe that's to be expected. Maybe should have happened earlier in the season. But at four and four and up 21-13 with three seconds to go to half, they were feeling pretty good about themselves and their confidence completely deflated in that second half. They were outscored 28 to nothing, outscored at Texas last week 24 to three. And trying to build it back up for their finale today. This return by Billy Mitchell. To the 28-yard line, hit there by Rico Wesley. 21-yard return, 23 seconds in the quarter. You know, not only was TCU uh, Daddy, Daddy. looking good, they were feeling good about themselves. It was a combination. They were playing well. They had beaten Baylor, manhandled them, and came back with a lot of confidence, had a three-game uh, winning streak going, and then all things started to fall apart at the Texas Tech game. But Pat Sullivan wants to make sure that this team finishes strong. And this last uh, exhibition of an offensive drive, I think, is what he wants. Thomas remains the tailback. Smith the fullback. Pressure comes. Short toss Harrison. And look out. One man with an angle. He will not get Tony Harrison. 71 yards. play of the year by the Aggies by 21 yards. Tony Harrison's third score of the year and just like that the Frogs are reeling again. Back on their heels. Extra point then it's Julius. And it's 21 to 3. Combination of a good play well executed uh, excellent uh, run by the receiver and very good blocking at the point of the reception. Now watch everybody turn upfield and he breaks into the secondary and there's no catching him. He's gone for six. Wow. I'd say uh, Texas A&M has answered the uh, question, will we be ready to play against TCU? Will we show the nation that we are capable of being a top four or five team? And I think that uh, they've come in with a great attitude and obviously well prepared. Harrison getting the congratulations from the coaches upstairs. Sullivan thinking, what next? And that challenge, though, that we talked about at Face Slocum this week, even, even with obviously much better talent, is not to be uh, sneered at, because there's a lot of coaches who come into games with a lot better talent who, who don't put it together, and that's why you see so many upsets every week. But Slocum has avoided that upset but consistently over the last several years. Well, he really has. His uh, team, uh, I think, with the exception of one game in the last... Uh, a uh, few years that was uh, very obvious to everybody and that was the Oklahoma game this year. Uh, I think he's done an outstanding job in preparing his teams to play well against every opponent. But I think the uh, OU game, interestingly enough, made this team. I think uh, the coaches and the players decided what they wanted to be and they've worked to become not only the best team in the conference, but maybe one of the top four or five in our nation. Jimmy Oliver's return to the 25-yard line, being honored here at TCU 
Horn this week. One of the greatest Horn Frogs in their proud football history back in the 30s and 40s. Sammy Baugh, slinging Sammy, now a rancher out in West Texas near Rotan. This was before the game. Athletic director Frank Windegger making the presentation of the retired number 45 jersey for slinging Sammy Baugh. Interesting quarterback number. Breaking tackles, Andre Davis. Answering a big play with another big play to close out the first quarter, 29 yards. He did a good... Watch him break into the clear. What a first period for the Aggies, 21-3. Out here isn't the only place our Ford F-Series pickups have blazed new trails. Our engineering labs are filled with constant improvements like our new standard airbag, a new convertible console seat, and yet along with all these new ideas, there's one that's not new for us at all. Toughness. Because when you design a truck for the future, it better be built to last that long. And now for a limited time, get the best red carpet lease ever on America's best-selling truck, Ford F-Series. Grades, poor attitudes. There's only one man who can turn them around. Boom Boom Jackson. Take notes. Deborah Martin reports on a new way of learning, starting Monday only on 11 News at 10. Because it's not just the news, it's the spirit of Texas. Don't be late. You know, I run into people all the time that have never shopped at a men's warehouse store, and I say the same thing to everybody. We offer many of the same brands, the same designers as you'll find in apartment stores at 20 to 30 percent less every day. Give us one minute. Just come into our store and look at the labels and look at the prices for 60 seconds, and you'll become a men's warehouse customer. I guarantee it. The Men's Warehouse. Call 1-800-776-SUIT. In testing, the Lexus GS cornered better than the BMW 540i. You may say that it's only a matter of inches, and you'd be right. But there will be instances on the road where an inch is as good as a mile. And the GS is thousands less than the 540i at Sterling McCall Lexus and Westside Lexus. on the Exxon uh, Game of the Week here on Raycom and Prime Network in Fort Worth. It's uh, an Aggie runaway so far in some numbers that you do never associate with A&M. 175 passing yards in that first quarter, 125 receiving yards already, including the 71-yard score by Tony Harrison. It's obvious TCU came into this game knowing they had to stop the run. They've lined up in an eight-man front. Uh, to do that, they've done a good job against the run, but that makes you very vulnerable to the passing game, which Texas A&M has taken great advantage of. And after the 29-yard run by Davis in Aggie territory, McLeod rolling, and now under some heat and rolling the other way. Runs into his own man. That's where the circuitous trip ends a pickup of about two feet for all that effort Antonio Shorter and Steve Soleri finally rope and tie him at the 45 first quarter stats will really amaze you if you're thinking of A&M still as just a running team they run for 33 yards and they're outrushed by TCU and they throw for 172 71 of them of course on the touchdown by Harrison, most of that after the catch. Second and more. Second and nine, Oglesby. Nice balance. Knives inside the 40. Hit by Tackleman, the nose guard. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network.
DCU looking at a third and four. Line to gain is the AM 36. You know, Oglesby is one of the unheralded players in the conference this year. He's a transfer from Purdue, and in two seasons, he's moved up to the number 11 spot as a receiver at the fullback position. That's uh, really rather remarkable. McLeod going deep. And the Frog fans scream for a flag, but they won't get one. Intended receiver Kyle McPherson covered by Aaron Glenn. And they got their feet tangled up, but a no call, and it's fourth down. The Aggies were screaming on the sideline for that one, too, because I think they thought that it was offensive pass interference. And it was neither one. They just, as will happen, ran over one another accidentally. So Cordesman, whose first punt traveled 51 yards, We'll try to pin A&M deep in their own end. When signal fair catch gets out of the way and it just reaches the end zone. And the signal for the fair catch caused the TCU guy to slow down. Then he gets out of the way and the ball goes in the end zone. Touchback Aggies go from their 20 when we come back. Cowboys invented Wrangler cowboy cut jeans for those relaxing moments when you just want to stretch out and unwind. Wrangler, the Western original. We're working hard every day, taking pride in what we do. Win Dixie is committed to bringing you lower prices every day. Our buyers always negotiate the lowest possible price, like power buys. By buying in volume and stocking up, we can drive a low price even lower and pass the savings on to you. That's a power buy. You'll find thousands of them at Winn-Dixie. They're part of our ongoing promise to bring you lower prices every day. Wrangler cowboy cut jeans were designed by cowboys to be comfortable for an eternity. All eight seconds of it. Wrangler, the Western original. 17, your order's ready. It seems as though the creators of value meals have forgotten that value isn't just how much you pay, but how much you get. Well, with Whataburger's new Whata Meals, you get Whataburger quality and value with the genuine Whataburger, Whata Chicken, Beef or Chicken Fajita, or Grilled Chicken Sandwich, each served with hot fries and a cold drink, making all other value meals seem of very little value. Whataburger Whata Meals at participating restaurants. Breakfast Whata Meals also available. Aggies up 21 to 3 early in the second quarter. Our Southwest Airlines storyline, Sam Adams already ejected for an altercation with Clifford Barnes, offensive lineman for TCU. Pulling has been near perfect, 7 of 9 through the year, two touchdowns. And for TCU, Max Naki replaced after an interception by Glenn. And it has been a good day for Andre Davis. Boston College for the early lead at Notre Dame. That's Rodney Thomas is upended by Wesley at the 25-yard line. Rico Wesley began this season expected to be a starter. He had six interceptions as a junior last year, 88 tackles. Jones beat him out. And uh, if you just joined us, Calvin Jones taken off the field on a stretcher in that first quarter with a reported concussion, and we still await further information about the condition of Jones. How many football teams across America could have a second team tailback like this one. Tremendous. Stretching catch, Gene Lowry. Well done. 35 yard line for 10 yards. That's just his fifth catch of the year. Sophomore from Kilgore. When you're hot, you're hot. Everything's uh, coming up roses. Steps back, feet under control. Throws the ball perfectly, extends himself, the receiver does, and makes a big catch. First and 10, 12 18, second quarter. And on the ground, Fort Thomas swarmed after a gain of one at that by Reggie Anderson. 
And Brian Brooks, the right defensive tackle. It's hard to run in there. TCU still staying with the theory of uh, eight men close to that line of scrimmage from uh, the tight end to the opposite tackle. They're going to have eight folks there ready to make the play against uh, Texas A&M's running game. Well, and, and that worked in terms of holding the running game down for A&M in the first quarter, but give the Aggies credit for countering with an active passing game. Bullard just in time. Another catch by another backup wideout, Kevin Byrne, with just his third of the year. This one goes 20 yards. Another first down. Byrne, a redshirt freshman from the Woodlands, Texas. There are sequences in every play that cause it to be successful. The first step here is the blocking of the offensive line. Watch him stop on the outside, turn back in. That's great protection. Now here's the outside receiver coming across the middle of the field, and this is really a great throw. Bullock just laid it right on the money. Thomas. And driven back by Weston McWilliams. Incidentally, that last play, TCU dropped the uh, eight-man front and moved to a cover four coverage where they had four secondary people but uh, they still got the completion in the middle zone. SMU completing its season, looking for their second win at Navy. And they lead seven to nothing. Calvin Jones, uh, the report seems to be uh, good, but he will not return today. With that first quarter concussion, game of two, second and eight. Lowry in motion. Bullock off the roll, and that one is too tall. No chance for the second fingertip grab by Gene Lowry. It'll be third and eight. So offensive coordinator Bob Toledo with the luxury with this big early lead of working in a lot of the backups. And Lowry and Byrne among them. Harrison and Mitchell back in now, the first team wideouts for the passing situation on third down. Average on first down for A&M has been a gain of 12 yards. They haven't faced many of these third and long. Nine people for TCU in the scrimmage within five yards of the goal line. Deep intended for Harrison and almost picked off Greg Evans. <laughs> kicking himself because he drew a bead on that one inside the five. It hung up in the air long enough for him to have a good shot at it. But he didn't get it. Bullock's again got great uh, protection. No one's even close. Ball thrown down the middle. TCU uh, had a person in the proper position. Could have been an interception. Looked like Harrison prevented it just by being in the area and maybe distracting Evans. Absolutely so he did. Bennett to kick. Woodley at his 10. The receiver becomes a defensive player once it's recognized that the defense uh, has a chance to intercept the ball. He is now a defensive player. And just a 25-yard punt by Bennett. You can still be a part of the excitement and pageantry of the 1994 Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic. Tickets for the 58th annual New Year's Day game, $42 a piece, and reserved parking is available for $6. Call 1-800-638-BOWL to reserve your tickets for the 94 Mobile Cotton Bowl. Florida tuning up for the showdown with Florida State. McLeod still the TCU quarterback. From the 18, Brian Collins, who hasn't had some action yet, but probably will, the tight end went in motion. This is Oglesby. A typically short gain out of the backfield for Oglesby, who came in their leading receiver, 46 catches on the year. Five of them for touchdown. Big target, he's 6'1", 222. He's got great hands, Dave. He... Uh... I've noticed him on several occasions where he really has the natural hand-eye coordination of a wide receiver, except he's a little bit big to be put out uh, wide to receive a pass. 
Andre Davis now, normally the tailback, splits way out wide right. On second down and about six, but they go on the ground to Oglesby, a flag down. Oglesby hit and stopped at the 24-yard line. Dogs again think it's against a and Boy, they've had a consistent problem today, Grant, lining up on side. From the Watch linebackers up. before, I think this time it's uh, Tackleman at nose guard. Uh, he uh, is at nose guard and made an outstanding play. Well, he's not uh, in the neutral zone. He's fine. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I'll show you in a moment is that center is lined up over the football. He's actually into the neutral zone himself. You can see the ball underneath the center's head. Tackleman was fine. Uh, it was not uh, his uh, era on the offsides. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Look where the ball is. It's underneath the center's head. So those outside defensive linemen are going to uh, try to get on the offensive linemen. They may line up in the neutral zone. That's what's happening. Just need one. A lot more than that. Up near the 40-yard line. Andre Davis hit by White after a pickup of 12. He has the first down and four. TCU's offensive line shows spurts during a ball game of being outstanding. Watch this. This is blocking against one of the premier defensive lines in the nation. Center does a great job on tackleman. Offensive guards and both tackles do an outstanding job, and when that happens, you're going to make some big yardage. Well, if there is uh, any reason for future optimism about TCU's football, the offensive line may head the list. That time it was definitely Tackleman, but we'll see whether he was drawn off. That offensive front for TCU, all juniors except for sophomore center Kevin Brewer, and they're big. 302, 292, 275, 270. And a dead ball foul offside against the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And coach, when you have as they will next year, an experienced, almost all senior offensive line, that usually is the first portent of a successful team. Dave, you cannot have a successful team without an outstanding offensive line. Any team on any level, you look at them and they're going to have an offensive line if they're good offensively. Texas Tech, all season best offense in the league, not just because of their great skill people. Davis hit it for 46. But Tech has been uh, gifted with pretty much an all-senior offensive line, and that makes the feats by Bam Morris, over 1,500 yards rushing, Robert Hall, Lloyd Hill possible. Anytime you see a great runner make yardage, there's two things involved, natural talent with the runner and then an offensive line that is going to make those holes possible. Second down, leading three, catch there is Collins. The outstanding sophomore tight end from Texarkana, Texas. 35 grabs for 428 yards and two touchdowns coming in. And those numbers lead Southwest Conference tight ends, and he has a frog first down at the midfield strike, just inside it. Watch uh, Shorter all the way. He drives in, plants that foot, turns back outside, never stops, never quits, keeps on coming on, and gets there in time to make the stop. Also, Solari was the guy hanging on. Atkinson showed blitz. So it's Davis on the ground. Andre Davis continues an outstanding first period with a gain of at least nine. Into the secondary, another tackle by the safeties, White and Hendricks. And Davis headed for the 100-yard mark, probably at this rate, by halftime. This is the team that uh, Coach Sullivan wants to see on the field. One that can line up against Texas A&M, come off the football, and move those chains. Get down in a position and get points on the board. More time, Davis breaking tackles and he's inside the 30. 
And up to Davis. ECU first down at the 29-yard line. Michael Hendricks prevented further damage. I can't say enough about uh, TCU's offensive line, and particularly on this series. Left side of the line is pulling around to the right, which is a normal type of action. That running back is running really hard, and they're moving the ball against Texas A&M. Only one rusher has gained 100 on the ground against the Aggies this year. Nancy Edmonds of Rice, Davis, over 90 in this first half. This time they were ready, and they meet him at the line of scrimmage. The 11th carry for Andre Davis, 94 yards. They're Secondary of uh, Texas A&M's getting real quick support. I would not be surprised to see a play-action fake to try to... Uh, uh, take advantage of the fact that those uh, secondary people are right on the line of scrimmage to make the tackle. So no game. Near the five-minute mark before halftime. And up 21-3, but TCU marching, and that one intended for Davis. Way overthrown. And a critical third down now. they got to get something out of this drive, and, and for their sake, it better not be just three. This would be very disappointing to have this kind of drive against uh, Texas A&M and to come away with uh, no points. They need seven points, but they need points for sure. They haven't scored a touchdown uh, since uh, the uh, half of the Texas Tech run. First half. Two weeks ago, that's right. That scored 73 to 6 since then. Davis will be right at the marker. We'll see where they place him. He is inside the 20, and he needed to be right at the 19. Hendricks and Teichelman tackling Andre Davis, who goes over the 100 yard mark. That is an achievement against this defense. I really like the way this Davis is running, too. Uh, he looks quicker to me this week than he did last week. What's this cut as he gets right to the line of scrimmage? Wraps the ball up and almost got that first down. Close. About four inches. DCU will go for this. They need to get the first down. Get on down and get the touchdown before the half. He's the first Frog sophomore with 500-yard games, and it bears repeating every time this year he's had 100. Pat Sullivan has come away a winner. 10-0 at number one in the first. This year sent in their two tight ends. Davis outside, he won't get it. Antonio Shorter. Made the a loss at made the 22. Wrong. He cut uh, outside and he should have cut inside. There was a hole there. There was a hole when they lined up at the line of scrimmage. And he just missed the cut. Well, with just inches to go, you'll see a sneak. You'll see the uh, dive over the middle. This time, they try to go outside and they don't pick it up. Watch, watch the hole. The natural hole is inside. And the Aggies hold and still lead by 18. It's the place to catch some of baseball's first pitches and where people love to throw themselves into the game. But the town of Sarasota, Florida is also a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank, which lets Albert and Fruit Company pick from the widest range of commercial services gives families like the Piles greater investment options and helps people keep all their bases covered in Sarasota and in 1,900 other communities throughout our nation. For quick response. For smooth acceleration, turning loose. For a cleaner engine, turning loose. Move up to 93 octane Exxon Supreme and turn the tiger loose. Hmm, luxurious.
accommodations now available. Lincoln Town Car. Spacious, elegant interiors, contemporary technology, most fuel-efficient luxury V8, computerized suspension, air condition, generous storage space, 24-hour security, standard dual airbags and anti-lock brakes, great ride home, rear-wheel drive, by appointment at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. I'll have to give them a call tomorrow. Today's game is brought to you in part by the Texas Lottery, and tonight's Lotto Texas estimated jackpot is $3 million. So the Aggies hold. They take over through 21 with 421 to go in the first half. And a 21 to 3 lead. Excellent crowd. This may be uh, very close to the biggest crowd of the year they had here in Fort Worth, which was 40,000 plus for the opener against Oklahoma. Mitchell in motion, Smith and Hill in the eye. Greg Hill with a pitch. Turned back inside by Royal West and undercut by Brian Brooks. And dives forward for about three to the 25. You can always have a fresh running back when you have Hill alternating with Thomas mixing in Gross and, and Smith and McElroy we haven't seen that much that's the simplest of plays when you got a great running back you just turn pitch him the ball get a blocker on a defensive man and let uh, the great running back find the hole gave him three to the 24. And the out pattern on the money, but they say incomplete intended for Harrison. Right where he made his break, but he didn't make the catch. Coming up at halftime, we'll announce the 1993 Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team. This is the team that fans cast more than one million ballots to select for 1993. We'll also take a look at the Texas Lottery first half highlights and a look at both school bands. TCU's uh, added a little wrinkle defensively. They're now putting the eight men up on the line of scrimmage and on the snap of the ball, running two of them off out into the flat area. On third and seven, good protection, but it's batted down by Brooks. And then Smith thought maybe he'd made the catch before he hit the grass, but it's incomplete. And Brian Brooks, junior from Arlington, made the stop. It's a pretty good charge by the uh, TCU defense, particularly uh, on the perimeter where the ball was batted down. Bennett to kick. Polig hit nine of his first 11, and he's misfired on four in a row now. Richard Woodley at his 40. Lowest kick yet by Bennett. But as usual, the Aggie special teams turn in the stop. 39-yard punt, minus one on the return. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guest If you're responsible for controlling expenses, we can customize your bill by location, individual, or account code. If you're concerned about card security, we offer customized fraud protection for your company and employees. We also offer discounts as high as 40%, a variety of competitive savings plans, and easy worldwide access. We got the job! Call AT&T now and decide how many or how few features you need. The AT&T Corporate Calling Card. I don't know, call it a hunch. Find out how yeah. customized the calling card can be. Cut. Yeah, Bob, the rushes look great, but these rewrites are killing us. Great day to just get outdoors and enjoy some football if you're an Aggie fan and watch some football if you're a TCU fan. They take it at the 36-yard line. 
And they have time to make some damage before halftime. They go to the end around McPherson. Great speed, but an excellent open field hit by Ray Mickens, the cornerback, after a pickup of 11 yards, which was designed to be much more than that. This is where speed comes into play for Texas A&M. It's an excellent uh, conceived play. Hand off to the wide receiver coming around, and though they move to the fake initially, the secondary of Texas A&M recovers because of great speed. It is a first down. Offset eye, Davis. Huge hole. He's tripped up by White. And you know he was thinking more than a six or seven yard gain with that gaping opening that he charged through. Now think about this. TCU had an excellent drive. They were stopped short. First down, deep inside Texas A&M territory. Their defense goes on the field, holds, and now TCU starting another drive. This is what TCU needs to do, not only now, but for the rest of this game. Aggies average allowing only 123 rushing yards per game. Davis close to that by himself in this half. He takes the short toss. A flag is down as he got driven out by Mickens. And another flag is down. One flag back where the pass was thrown. Another well after the play had ended near the sideline. The first one was holding on uh, TCU offensive lineman. And I wonder if the second might have something to do with some words exchanged after the catch and the tackle. Uh, I'd say that that's a very good uh, guesstimate. That or somebody shoved late. R.C. Slocum already minus his best defensive player, Sam Adams, thrown out the first quarter along with TCU's Clifford Barnes. Keepa Chatham has played at that left end for eight We have holding against the offense. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense. Both penalties will be enforced in the order of their occurrence. It will still be second down. Okay, this is going to be interesting. You see uh, two penalties being enforced, and uh, they'll step off the 10-yard penalty against TCU, then turn right around and step off the 15-yard unsportsmanlike, which also, nope, he said it'll be a second down. It's hard to say it would be a first down, but that'll be a second down. Tony's adding a score now, 14-0 at Navy. Auburn, Alabama, 3-0 for the undefeated Tigers in the first quarter. Second time they've ever hosted Alabama at Auburn in a game that's normally played at Birmingham. 15 yards. That's a little closer than I normally want to beat it. <laughs> So after the uh, dual markoffs, Wall is at the A&M 49. It's second and six. 2.09 before halftime. McLeod out of bounds. Nearest receiver, Stu Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, the TCU defensive coordinator Reggie Herring with the catch and then the subsequent spike celebration over on their sidelines. So it's third and six. Are you surprised that Naki has not come back in after he was yanked after that first series? I am a little bit surprised, but you have to also look that uh, this young man hadn't given up a turnover. Uh, he's uh, executed very well, and uh, they've moved the football. One thing they haven't done is pick up a third down conversion. And that one let fly and not near any TCU receiver, but he had heavy pressure again. Now 15 yards away was Oglesby, but McLeod at least avoided the sack. However, TCU again will kick it away. And there's time for the Aggies to do something with a minute 59 before the half. Uh, that was uh, TCU's weakest series, Dave. Uh, uh, the plays were not well conceived. They were trying to roll out into the uh, defense that's coming up the field. They would have been better off just in a drop back situation. Gordesman gets the hop that he looked for and almost got on that last punt. It is covered at the three. 
by Chris Pyland for the Frogs. And it's time to go around the league with our Ford Southwest Conference updates. At the Alamo Dome tonight at 7, Houston and Texas Tech Cougars lead the all-time series. They usually average about 80, 90 points between them when they play. Beck a big favorite tonight. Baylor, earlier this week, dismissing senior fullback Robert Strait from the team for rules violation. Second time he's been suspended. This time he is tossed. After four touchdowns against Rice last week, Chuck Reedy not ruling out possibly reinstating him if they go to a bowl. SMU with only four lost fumbles all year. Conference record for fewest lost fumbles is six. And Greg Hill in the clear with one man to beat. He's gone. Greg Hill. 94 yards. Greg Hill has tied the longest run in Texas A&M history. Bubba Bean, a 94-yarder against Tech in 75. Greg Hill, a 94-yarder against TCU in 93. My. Then and it's 28-3. to three. Another one of those one-play, bang-bang scoring drives for the Aggies. Harrison, with a 71-yard score to his credit, throws the clearing block for Hill. Good block uh, by the fullback. Hill uses his abilities. He breaks into the clear. Uh, it's all over. Now, one of the things that coaches get so concerned about, and I saw R.C. Uh, speak with Tony Harrison when he came off the field, in the right-hand corner, you'll see Tony throw a block at the very last moment. You never block behind the ball carrier. Block in front of the ball carrier. And I would imagine R.C. reminded him of that. What's up, fool? Hey, Carter, good luck tonight, Carter. Dallas Carter, his alma mater, which plays DeSoto in the second round of the high school playoffs tonight. Something tells me he may be there. Man, he'll catch his breath. Deservedly so. Texas Longhorns have lost four of five to Grant Taft coached Baylor teams. Chuck Reedy in charge, of course, in Austin today for the first time for the Bears. And Baylor's won their last two trips into Austin. The Lady Raider basketball team sets an NCAA record with over 6,700 season tickets sold to Lubbock Municipal Coliseum for their season. That is That's incredible. tremendous accomplishment. Yes, tremendous. Uh, and they had a great year last year. Defending national champion. A return by Stu Dickens up to the 26. 19 yards. Greg Hill might have earned the rest of the day off. I don't know. What more can you, what more can you ask of him? Ten carries, 125 yards, 94 of them. Last time he touched it. Ian Harrison comparing breakaway scores. 128 still to go for McLeod. moved the frogs but not through the air it's been by handing off to this guy Davis who stopped for one or two here his 15th carry for 110 ends in the tackle by Jason Atkinson he may by halftime he gets nine more yards have the biggest rushing day anyone has had against A&M all year well it's because the uh, TCU offensive line is uh, virtually in the second quarter been dominant time and McLeod is incomplete over the middle intended for Woodley excellent protection this time Woodley with a coverage by Junior White it'll be third and eight Junior White has turned into a very good football player he's very strong against the run he reacts uh, to uh, ball carrier 
but he's where he should be in a passing situation. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that those secondary people look at the offensive line and read their alignment on the line of scrimmage. They can tell if it's pass or run by the pressure on their hand. McLeod in the area where two frogs converged that time. It was incomplete intended for Oglesby, but also very close was Washington. And I'm not sure that one of them didn't run the wrong pattern. So still 46 seconds to go in the half. The way the Aggies have scored, Sullivan still can't breathe easy. And I've waited all year for that electrifying run of a return punt by Texas A&M. Uh, they have one of the best uh, ever in the nation. Mercy. They get the block. That's fine. And as they fight for position, they finally get the recovery for the touchdown. They stormed it with about six or seven guys all vying to get the score on the recovery. And I think it's 30 Donovan Greer who got the block to set up the touchdown. Here's Donovan. Well, I was looking for an electrifying uh, punt return, and we got an electrifying punt block for six points. We might have an injured Aggie also. If he is, they injured themselves fighting over the ball in the end zone. Yeah, and that pileup, that's not surprising that somebody got nicked. You'll see the pressure come in. Uh, great block. Ball kicks backwards. Now everybody's running to it. Had it in his hands. Falls, reaches out, gets it. The pileup comes in on top of him. Uh, he got injured somewhere in those uh, few seconds after the ball was blocked and the time it was finally covered by someone else. Well, that's Typhoon McMullen, who had first crack at the recovery. Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, what we say, there's, there's enough time for more damage by the Aggies. And they do it. They get another extra point by Terry Venatulius. 37 seconds before halftime, and it's now 35 to 3. A sickening sound if you're a punter. Uh, very sickening. You get two thuds. The sound of the ball coming off the foot and the sound of the ball being blocked by the oncoming rushers. Well, we're going to check and get the official touchdown uh, return scorer on that coverage. 30 straight or 30 or more in now eight straight games. They had already broken a record with seven straight 30 or better last week. That man hit by a tidal wave. They give Dennis Allen the touchdown. He's got two interceptions and a touchdown special team score without playing a whole lot. He, he gets very little action, but when he gets in there, Dennis Allen makes stuff happen. These special teams for Texas A&M are among the best I've seen in the last 20, 25 years. They uh, have great speed and great determination, uh, whether they're covering or whether they're kicking. And, and here's a big return by Jimmy Oliver up to the 45-yard line. Wow, you can get a neck spring watching this back and forth as you late the second quarter. That 46-yard return by Oliver has the Frogs in Aggie territory with 28 seconds to go. Just as I brag on them, they give up the most yardage on a, punt, on a kick coverage uh, that they've given all year long. They had a one about 46 yards early in the year, I think. Twenty eight seconds to go halftime. Pat Sullivan's going to have to have his best halftime preparation. Yeah. What do you say to a team that's been outscored now 87 to six over eight quarters. McLeod to avoid the sack. Aggie fans scream for a flag for grounding. No flag. 21 seconds. And you wonder if we might not see in the second half Chance McCarty, who's a true freshman, 
who actually started two weeks ago at Tech. They had him in just for the first play of the day, which was a long, incomplete pass. They say he may have the best arm since Sammy Baugh here at TCU. Haven't seen him yet. You wonder if we might not in this type of game. McLeod incomplete on, him on his last six pass attempts. Make it seven straight incompletions intended in a crowd for Oglesby with 20 seconds before halftime, third and ten. You don't want to squander this very good field position. Doesn't come along very often against Texas A&M. Only about uh, 45 yards to go to the end zone after a kick return. Fighting Irish finally on the board in South Bend. Good protection. Finally a completion for a yard if that by Andre Davis out of bounds with 14 seconds. Bring up Ford and a long nine. And Sullivan signals from a cloud to come over for a brief word. Cloud very intelligent quarterback as Sullivan was. Sullivan an academic standout as well as a Heisman winner at Auburn. 20 some years ago. And the Aggie 43. Last gasp this half for TCU. Open almost a one handed catch by Brian Collins. That close to a spectacular grab at the 22. Ball thrown across the middle where they've had success all year long. Tight end is wide open. He just missed uh, catching the ball. So that leaves nine seconds for AM, and you're tempted to say they'll take a knee and be done with it, but the way this half has ended, we can't say that because they might score again. Corey Pulling's in. Anything can happen. One of the better days he's had in just one half, 202 passing yards. Here's the freshman, Leland McElroy, who hunts for room outside and does not get out of bounds on the final play of an amazing Aggie show in the first half. Sparked by Greg Hill's 90. is Corey Seymour. The punter on the Supreme Team this year, Willie Shupp of Baylor, and who was left out on the defense? Well, Aaron Glenn, of course, one of the better defensive backs in America and already a first-team All-American. And I think Ryan McCarr deserves to be on this team, but the fans have spoken. And uh, for those million-plus ballots, Exxon donates five cents per ballot to the Southwest Conference Scholarship Fund. There are your selections for the 1993 Exxon Supreme Team. This is great acceleration.
your numbers from the Texas Lottery's new Pick 3 game. Everybody say hi. Hi. You can pick any three of us, right, gang? Absolutely. From zero to nine. And it won't hurt our feelings if some of us don't get picked. Right, gang? Oh. Okay. Pick three in an exact order. Or in any order. You can even pick more than one of the same number. So play Pick 3, and look for drawings Monday through Saturday to see if you're a winner. Our agent helps us get the right coverage. So we're always protected. When you have a claim, Farm Bureau works hard to help you get things back to normal. They can help you with a plan to make your retirement years great years. Helping you is what we do best. That's why people across America, from every walk of life, depend on Farm Bureau insurance. For Auto, Home, and Life, call your local Farm Bureau today. This is the world, and this is Texas, the number one. Thirty-five three Aggies. We look at the Lincoln Mercury dealers' halftime stats. They're pretty enormous. Rushing is almost dead even. That is a surprise, but 202 passing yards for A&M and only 34 for TCU really tells the, the major part of the story. Third down conversions, TCU over. They have the only turnover. And one of those line penalties, they had an edge of about three minutes in time of possession but it's because two of the Aggie scores were on one play drives and they blocked a field goal for the last score of the half. All right, blocked a punt, recovered in the end zone for the last score of the half. Terry Venetulius will kick it off to begin the second half. And we will undoubtedly see an awful lot of folks because Texas A&M has just until Thursday night to get ready to host Texas and finish off what they hope will be yet another Cotton Bowl winning season. Jimmy Oliver is returned to the 20 of 11 yards and that's where TCU will go to work and Scott McLeod who took over from the second series through the rest of the first half opens the second half. We review the game plan. Well, TCU's done a good job in emptying their playbook. They've been uh, uh, very diversified in use of their plays and they've run the ball well. And they haven't gotten any help from Texas A&M and uh, that was only a prayer. It wasn't expected and they certainly haven't scored. And McLeod's numbers, as you can see, pretty dismal through the air. The guy that's carried him is but Andre Davis on the ground. Looks like a couple of adjustments I already see that Texas A&M made at halftime. Moved the uh, techniques of a defensive lineman, adjusted them a little bit. So TCU will have to come and adjust their offensive play uh, to fit TCU's or Texas A&M's movement. Aggie defensive coordinator Bob Davey, one of the best year in, year out in the country. Outstanding young coach, uh, will be a head coach in uh, Division I-A school, probably before too very long. A lot of time, and again, McLeod, nowhere near the closest target, in this case, Andre Davis. He has, I, I suppose, understandably, some happy feet back there because he's been under a heavy rush, but they are 0 for 8 on third downs and 1 for 14 last year in College Station in this game. So they're 1 for 22 against A&M in two games. They're piling up some ugly numbers, yep. And over the last eight quarters now outscored 87 to 6 by Tech, Texas, and now the Aggies. Sideline route run by Washington and Oglesby right between those two. And McLeod now four for 18, 22 yards through the air. And Sullivan is not happy. That's not the way you want to start the third quarter, particularly when you're down 35 to three. You want to get a drive, sustain it, and uh, get points on the board. Hopefully try to get in the game, uh, make something happen uh, where nothing has been happening. 
Ortisman, who had an excellent first half until that block as the Aggies set up the return this time. It's Aaron Glenn. He's got big room. Aaron Glenn for his second return touchdown. He had a 76-yarder for a score against Missouri. This is a 55-yard return for a score. Well, I had uh, been expecting that to happen and uh, didn't have to wait long. Lo and behold, there it was. That only enhances his national lead in punt returns. In fact, that may cement that lead. Be hard for anybody to catch him now. Yeah, most team season will be over uh, today. Venetulius makes it 42 to 3. They've scored just about every way you can today. Well, this is a very uh, solidly set up punt return. There's no one down close to him as he initially catches the ball. I don't see anybody laying on the ground. It wasn't that kind of a blocking drill, but uh, he uh, made the cuts when he had to. Barely a minute into the second half, a and has scored again. For quick response. For smooth acceleration, turn him loose. For a cleaner engine, turn him loose. Move up to 93 octane Exxon Supreme and turn the Tiger loose. Yeah! If you invented a special potion that turned anybody into Rachel Hunter, the supermodel. Ralph, would you take me for a walk? Cool. Ralph, we gotta work all weekend. All weekend. And your special potion turned ordinary beer in a can into Keystone, Keystone Light and Keystone Dry. Specially lined for really smooth bottle beer taste. Ralph, mind if I join your party? Sure, Bert. Come on over. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Deep in the heart of Texas, and adored by lovers of the Old West, is Fort Worth. A city that not only has its own stock market, but is also a major financial center, because it's one of the 1,900 communities served by Nations Bank. Letting Justin Industries keep in step with the latest ideas in investment banking, giving families like the Trevinos a fresh start, and offering a range of resources that keeps people in Fort Worth from having to play second fiddle to anyone. Must be an Aggie fan to be that happy. No, nope. surprisingly, she is not. She is a frog fan all the way. Deep kick, Woodley two yards back. Richard Woodley next as he hits the 18. Return stops there. And let's review the Southwest Airlines game plan now for Texas A&M. I'd say the three Musketeers uh, combined certainly get an A-plus. That uh, high rate of returns uh, on their specialty teams, uh, creating field position, was uh, very well pinpointed by the last return for a touchdown. And uh, the defense has given up a little bit of yardage against the run, so I'd think they'd have to be a B, but I'm looking for them probably to be an A before this is over. They've come out with a great game plan the second half and uh, shut TCU down. Well, there was a penalty on that kickoff, and they're going to have to re-kick. A&M offsides before the kick. So uh, Max Naki was out on the field, ready to return as quarterback. He'll have to wait for this ensuing kickoff, which will happen from the 30. And not surprising at all with the ineffectiveness of Scott McLeod that Naki does get another shot today. Kind of wonder, though, if at some point you might not throw Chance McCarty, the freshman, in if you're Sullivan because he's not redshirting him this year, and this is this is it. You know, the season ends today. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Pat do that later on in the game. He wants to uh, know what all of those players can do, and this is certainly a good opportunity to do that. Uh, he is not very happy at this point. 
Uh, Pat Sullivan is a disciplinarian. Uh, he's a hard worker. He expects his players to play every down. He was very upset uh, with that uh, punt return in his specialty team. Excellent kick. It's Oliver from the key. Got a little second wind at the 20. He's knocked out at the 25-yard line. And now, Naki can go to work. It has been, until the last couple of weeks, an outstanding year for a first-year starter, just a sophomore. Naki at 59%. Mostly short passes, over 2,100 yards. And until the last couple of weeks, when he's been bitten by the interceptions, he had had more touchdowns than interceptions, but he's now thrown 14 of those against 12 scores. One of three outstanding quarterbacks uh, in a recruiting class a couple of years ago. Pulling, Lorenz, and Naki. Play action incomplete right in Richard Woodley's breadbasket with Ray Mickens. On the coverage in Austin, second quarter, Texas on top 10 to nothing. They've got a win to make Thursday night's game the battle for the Cotton Bowl berth. And Baylor has to win uh, to go to one of the bowl games. They have to have this uh, sixth victory. A lot of possibilities, and, and especially if Texas can pull that upset, and it would be an upset on Thursday night, that would ensure three Southwest Conference teams in bowls, assuming a Texas Tech win over Houston tonight to make them six and five. Andre Davis. Busted hard by Larry Jackson, but we've seen great second and third effort all day by Davis. He reaches the 31-yard line. Chased down finally by Atkinson. Going to see the uh, Texas A&M defense pursuing very well. But this is a good cut by Davis. Accelerates, moves back into the inside and picks up six or seven yards, but that may be negated by the uh, necessity to take the five-yard penalty. That's what, four times today A&M's lined up offsides defensively. Well, what's happening is TCU center is lining up over the ball. He's putting it under his own helmet. So that's causing those uh, Texas A&M players, when they line up on the football, they're pushing toward the neutral zone. And uh, I think that's happened three or four times already. Davis in the clear and near midfield for the first down for TCU. 18 yards and Andre Davis now the top rushing total against this wrecking crew defense all year long by 10 yards. 129 for the day and an injured Aggie Junior White. Previous best against the Aggies 119 by Edmonds of Rice. Well, I still tend to be uh, impressed with the offensive play of the TCU lineman. Uh, the running back, Davis, is doing a good job. I, I like his quickness and acceleration, but there's some holes to run in against this Aggie defense, and they've done it uh, throughout the first half, and now they've come back in the uh, second half. But uh, they're just not able to sustain a long drive and get points on the board. Something happens to them down the road. And happily, Junior White, as you saw, okay. And headed off for the Aggie sideline. First and 10. 12.53rd period. And Naki, incomplete, just underthrown, intended for Jimmy Oliver. Very good coverage around the ball when it uh, approached the receiver. The only single season record that Naki does not hold here at TCU is touchdown passes, which he won't get this year. It's 19 back in Davy O'Brien's 1938 season, the former Heisman winner. He has 12, and that is not bad for a sophomore. Blitz comes, draw play is fake. Naki keeps it. Aggies are saying they got by Larry Jackson, and it is an A&M recovery. Junior from Rockdale, Texas, Larry Jackson. Blitz coming by both inside linebackers. Scott Free uh, hits the ball just about the time the uh, 
Davis got it in his hands. Big turnover. That was no fake draw play. It just looked like Davis didn't intend to take the handoff. He did, but he didn't hang on to it very long. Remember now that Texas A&M's last 14 points have come on the kicking game. And a new Texas A&M quarterback, Tommy Preston. Gets it outside to Rodney Thomas. Runs right over Greg Evans. And to the 26 of the Frogs, finally hit there by Reggie Anderson. Tommy Preston, sophomore from College Stations, A&M Consolidated High School. Has not played a lot, as you can tell by those numbers. We go back to the, the darkest day of the year for the Aggies, the loss at Oklahoma. And as bad as Pulig looked that day, there was a lot of clamoring to get Preston an equal shot for the job. He did get some second half work at Norman. But the very next week, Pulig was right back in, and he has been a different quarterback ever since. Thomas breaking more tackles. Anderson, like Anderson bowling ball Reggie coming Anderson. through there then, bouncing off defenders. Reggie Anderson just picking up his teammates' leavings for a lot of these tackles. He's getting second and third crack. Oh, I like this running back. I, you know, Greg Hill's a great running back. You cannot take that away from him, but there's just something about the way this guy turns it up field like a hooking bull. He's, uh, he's running through the uh, secondary trying to run over people. He describes himself as a violent runner. A lot of linebackers would describe yeah. him the same way. But he's got some moves, too. Nice cut. Should have a first at the 15. And Anderson cleaned him up again along with Evans. First and 10 Aggie. Thomas, for most of the year, a starter. Didn't start today. Greg Hill did. Second only to Bam Morris in Southwest Conference rushing. Nine carries and 38 yards today. He's up near 900 for the year. Average of 94 yards per game for Thomas. To the 11 is Detron Smith, the backup fullback. We're 19 stories up in the air, almost with nosebleed up here looking down on the field. And uh, I could hear that hit all the way up here. Now that's a combination of a hard running back and a good defensive play. Well, Lou Holtz preached all week about how the Irish would have their hands full at Boston College today. He figured after last week no one would ever listen to Holtz again complain about having a tough game, but he knew what he was talking about this week. Preston after the pump fake corner of the end zone for Mitchell and just incomplete with excellent coverage by Rico Wesley. Mama now 14-5 at Auburn. Northwestern by one over Penn State. In the second, any bets on how long that left? <laughs> College football, that's, uh, that's what you're looking at. Michigan shutting out Ohio State today. Notre Dame trailing at the half. Auburn trailing. A&M again avoids the letdown. Preston avoids the sack attempt by Hyder. And is popped hard at the 11 by Tyrone Roy, the backup middle linebacker. And that will bring Benetulius on for a chip shot field goal attempt. Preston, luckily, pretty big to take a hit like that. He's 6'3", 213 pounds. First time TCU's had a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Uh, that meant there was some good coverage uh, in the secondary. He scrambles around, does not pick up the first down. <laughs> Should be 28 yards for the most accurate kicker in A&M school history. Should be easy. And it is. Benetulius now 12 of 16 on field goal tries his senior year. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. So you're on the road a lot. Put in some long hours. Hey, I know how tough that can be. We really do earn our money, don't we? Okay, now where to stay? Consider La Quinta. They treat you good and the price is right. You care about money? 
or do you just want to throw it away? La Quinta. You're not staying at a hotel. You're staying with us. A lot of champagne glasses have been used to prove how smooth a car can be at high speed. Toast is in order for a truck that can do the same. New Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. We're taking Texas by the horns. So see your Texas Dodge dealer today. If you're having trouble spotting the state bird of Texas, just look for an unusually large wingspan and very distinctive coloring. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Texas is such a big state that to really succeed in business, you'd have to give every business person a company plane. So that's what we did. Southwest Airlines. It's like having your own company plane. Golden win and the Coors Light fan picks poll pick the top college teams in there to win New Year's Day bowl tickets by calling today 1-800-932-3000. This week's top 10. Notre Dame takes over for Florida State. Then Miami, Ohio State, which is shut out today. Nebraska, number five. Auburn, Florida, Alabama, which is beating Auburn, Tennessee, and Michigan. Boy, the fans knew something by putting Michigan with four losses all the way to 10th in the country. 28-0 Michigan win at Ann Arbor. Then Atulius hangs one way up in the air for Oliver at the one. Aggie showing those tremendous special team coverage units. Billy Mitchell that time after a return of only 11 yards and a shuttle system now an affected quarterback. We'll see McLeod again. I really am impressed as to how much uh, Texas A&M has improved this year. Since the first time I saw them play this year, they have really improved in uh, all areas. Their defense is much better. Their linebackers have improved dramatically, and I think their offense is just really outstanding right now. Incomplete. That one thrown behind John Oglesby and McLeod now four for 19. You knew that eventually they would have a good defense, but we said at the outset, this is even a better defense than the Aggies hope to have early in the year, but the offensive improvement is what is really remarkable, especially the passing game. Well, that's where they were really hurting, uh, particularly uh, coming out of the OU game. Uh, they pulled their horns in a little bit to try to give uh, Pulley uh, a little bit of chance to get high percentages on his passes and confidence, and it's worked. That's good coaching. Davis stood up by White, who is back in after the injury on their last defensive stand. And Davis buried, but they will give him forward progress back up to the 11-yard line. Talking to R.C. Slocum yesterday, I asked him, since Pulick is doing so well, have you added some stuff to the passing attack and tried to make it more sophisticated as opposed to what you did after the Oklahoma game to make it more simple? And his answer basically was, why mess with what works? He's doing it well now, and why add to something that's already clicking? Bumble snap, and McLeod dives on it. Back at the six. So they'll punt it away from the shadow of their own goal post with 8.23 to go in the third. Naki just didn't uh, get the ball on the snap. Uh, he's very fortunate to pull it in, but he was smart. He got on the ball to try to pick it up. At least give yourself a chance to punt out of the end zone. And a new punt returner is back there for the Aggies after Glenn's touchdown last time. This is Mitchell. Flag is down. Billy Mitchell isn't yet. Now he is at the 37, 44-yard punt return of 13 with markers on the play. Well, for TCU, what a devastating first three and a half quarters. Four years ago, in Austin, where Texas had not lost to Baylor since 1951, 
Robert Blackman for the Bears, a couple of scores on interception returns. A long, long day for the Longhorns and one of the biggest wins in Baylor football history. That day, 50-7, to coached by a since-departed fella who took it <laughs> in an icy departure from Memorial Stadium, one of, I suppose, your biggest wins ever, maybe the biggest? Well, no, it was Not a big your win. biggest? No, no. Not at, not at all. It was a big win, but uh, simply because uh, Baylor through the years has had a hard time winning in Austin, Texas, and to turn that around was the big win. But uh, uh, it, it didn't mean championship. It didn't mean uh, even bowl game, but it was a, it was a good win. Uh, I tell you, you saw there the reason I tried to find that cellular phone to yeah. warn old uh, yeah. Spike about that cold water. I, that's uh, what wanted me to remind him to get out of there. Because you remember when you get hit by one of those. It is cold. Yeah, there's the Penn State recovery. Quarterback at Northwestern. This is Detron Smith. Royal West wrapped him up. Liberal substitutions throughout this uh, Aggie offense. Now that's Ryan Kern who's in as the backup center. Smith the backup fullback. Jeff Jones back up at left tackle. 72 is in. Hayward Clay at tight end. Lowry and Burr in the wideouts. Second and eight. Preston ready to air it out, and it'll be way overthrown, intended for Lowry. A little confusion uh, there. The wide receiver pulled up uh, like he wanted to turn out on the route just about the time he saw the ball going uh, deep uh, it was not uh, close to being a completed pass well if 50 to 7 wasn't your biggest win was uh, 74 over Texas the biggest because that got you rolling it'll be 30 I think it uh, may have been for the conference itself uh, Dave because at that time Texas had thoroughly dominated the Southwest Conference and uh, we're going on to their uh, I think sixth or seventh uh, that would have been that would have been seven straight yeah, they'd won six in a row and so I think that was certainly big uh, for not only Baylor, but for the conference to sort of balance it out. Leland McElroy went in motion. He gets the short toss. He scored on this play earlier in the season, but the Frogs react quickly this time. Aaron Burton, 91, and McWilliams, number two, bringing down McElroy inside the 40. Well, you hit the nail on the head. That was just good reaction. The play was well executed. But the defensive line uh, reacted to the ball. Watch them as they see the ball. Watch 98 is already moving outside. He knows what's coming. He didn't get in on the play, but that gave you the key that the defense was looking for that particular play. They've worked on it. Rodney Thomas now driven back by Royal West. Royal West, the junior from Winona, Texas, shows his quickness and mobility. And brings down Thomas for a big loss. Simple toss, uh, lead blocker, pullback. West gets off his block and pulls him down behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, that uh, moves him up uh, one more notch, uh, seven now, I believe, behind the line of scrimmage tackles. Nine yards per play by Texas A&M today. Nearing 400 for the afternoon. Rodney Thomas. Might as well have caught that because he got popped anyway by Lenoy Jones. Jones' presence is the reason he didn't catch it. Royal West put good pressure on the quarterback, uh, and uh, the ball was not thrown exactly as you would draw it up. Watch West. Great pass rush. Actually, probably gets a hole there, but he put the pressure on the quarterback. Your defensive coach in a game like this, you want players who ignore the scoreboard, and Weston Jones are again deep and well overthrown. This is in the for Danny McCray, All American sprinter out of Colleen Ellison, with coverage by Rico Wesley. McCray was calling for a little help from the officials there. Thought he had been interfered with. Officials didn't believe so, so there was no call. So, fourth and 13. Which brings on James Bennett. 5.54 to play third quarter. 45-3 A&M. 
punter was another spot where they had some question marks. David Davis, one of the best ever graduating last year. Bennett has not been bad at all. Former walk-on. Junior from Austin. Partly because of his uh, outstanding coverage team, he has the top net average in the league at over 38. Woodley with the fair catch here. This one travels just 24 yards. The Cowboys business is a business of silence. A hundred miles of fence gives a person time to think, to wonder about who he is what the world is coming to. Talk to a cowboy long enough and you'll get an opinion on everything. That's because he's had time to think about everything. Yeah, at Wrangler, we know cowboys. Our genes were invented by them. That's why the West is in us. Wrangler, the Western original. Dr. Pepper, the taste you've been looking for. It's been going on every week for a while now. All this hooting and hollering, carrying on till the break of dawn. Play Win for Life from the Texas Lottery, and you could win $1,000 a week for life. Then again, so could your neighbors. This used to be such a quiet little neighborhood. Frogs from their 19-yard line with 5.46 to play in the third period. They're still trying to get a touchdown drive. Didn't manage it in Austin last week or in the second half at Lubbock or in the first half here. And the Aggies keep much of their first team defense on the field. McLeod remains the quarterback. Davis remains the tailback. He is dragged down after a pickup of one by Larry Jackson, who is one of the starters who's still in for the Aggies. This is an offensive scheme. Good concept. Run the ball on the draw. Getting some blocking up on the line of scrimmage. David, or Barrett Robbins and Bart Epperson are two individuals that have a remarkable record on this TCU football team. Guess what it is? Well, I know what it is. Okay, so it's not a guess. Here's Davis breaking more tackles. He's close to the first down. What they have done uh, is unprecedented in TCU history and maybe in this league's history. Epperson and Robbins have not sat down for a single snap all year. To this point, in the season, 835 offensive plays. These two young men have been in on and have not left the field when TCU's offense was on the field. And a couple weeks ago, the question came up, well, in a route, why don't you sit him down? And both of them said, we've gone this far. We might as well stick it out for the duration. And it looks like they will do so today. This is third and less than one. And McLeod carries out the fake. And he keeps and has the first down out of bounds at the 30. Chase there by Jackson. McLeod, who has not gotten it done through the air, but has moved the ball when he's been a quarterback, mainly on the ground and mainly because of the big 139-yard day in progress for Davis. They are combined, as you can see, just five of 23 for 34 yards through the air, and they've hit on just one of their last 14 pass attempts. But this isn't just any defense. Second best pass defense in the country. They have given up some running yards today. Davis now over 140 up to the 38, knocked back by Hendricks, the strong safety. TCU split the uh, blitz. Both linebackers came through. Offensive linemen picked them up, and uh, when Davis broke through the line of scrimmage, there were no linebackers there. They had been on a blitz, and so he picks up another five or six yards. 
This is now his third biggest day of the year. He had 167 and 12 catches in the New Mexico game. 160 against Tulane, 124 against Houston, 103 against Baylor. Three touchdowns, all wins. McLeod. Wow, that's not even a spiral. That's not, that's not even close. Left-handed passer running to his right, trying to throw deep. You saw him drop the ball, bring it up, and bring it across his chest, and uh, he didn't get anywhere close to the receiver. It was thrown up in the first row of the stands. So it'll be third and six. And some more subs filtering in now defensively for the Aggies. Billy Mitchell for Mickens at one corner. Chris Colin is into the linebacker. He comes on a blitz and another fumbled exchange. McLeod dives on it for a loss back to the third. As I think McLeod is a little nervous trying to get out from under the center too quickly and not getting his hands on the ball firmly. Uh, that's two turnovers, fumbles that he's had. He recovered them so it wasn't a turnover. Yeah, numbers for Kevin Cordesman have been good, but they got the two big plays, the block and the recovery for a score and the 55-yard return for a score by Glenn. Willie Mitchell back this time and an Aggie bounce and at the 39-yard line, that's where it ends. Kick went just 30. So the winning streak for him over TCU, the longest with the exception of Texas over Rice in the history of this conference. Last time TCU beat a &M, October 21st, 1972. Boy, was it a long time ago. 49 current horse frogs weren't born yet. Pat Sullivan was in his rookie year in the NFL with the Falcons. And the new Aggie coaches, Emory Ballard, inventor of the wishbone as an assistant at Texas, taking over as the head man. And R.C. Slocum, an offensive assistant that year before he switched over to the defensive side. Billy Towhill was TCU's head coach. Charlie Davis, Lyle Blackwood, Ed Simonini. All defensive standouts in 1972. That was my first year at Baylor, and uh, Baylor hadn't beaten TCU in about 18 or 19 years here in Fort Worth, and we uh, uh, actually upset them and won the game that year, the same year they beat Texas A&M, which was a shock to everybody. That catch by Lowry. So this now extends the streak. It's, in fact, it extends a few streaks. This is 21 in a row in the conference, tying that all-time record of Texas. 21 in a row over TCU. Texas has beaten Rice 28 straight, and that is the longest streak in the conference. Rodney Thomas, near midfield. Charles McWilliams, sophomore safety from Austin on the tackle. And he is very near another AM first down. I think we'll see Leland McElroy in the fourth quarter. We've seen him a little bit today, but he hadn't lined up at tailback that often. They've split him wide. Slocum uses McElroy as what he calls his nickelback, and that's usually a defensive position. But when they want to get McElroy in on offense, they call him a nickel player. Not in right now. Didn't get the first down. It's third and less than one. As you saw, Jay Davern, 43 for TCU, anticipating a blitz. And he jumped off sides. True freshman from Arlington. True freshman is leaving the field. TCU was trying to make something happen by having a blitz called. And AM smartly gave a long call, a long snap signal. And made not only them show their hand, but uh, caused uh, the freshman to jump off sides in anticipation. Tommy Preston, most of this third quarter in charge of the offense for the Aggies. We're under one minute in the period. Markoff gives him a first down at TCU's 47. Thomas. Not just a power runner. And we even dive some hit by Tyrone Roy and another fight. We've had three or four of these separated. The first one ended in the double ejection 
of Sam Adams and Clifford Barnes. And since then, no ejections, but they've had to hop into the middle of a few of these. And no flags this time. Clemson, 8-3. and three. They win at South Carolina. They, I believe, will go to the Peach Bowl and play uh, Kentucky is the way it's lining out in the coalition, possibly. Second and five. First man this time, and Smith should have another Aggie first down. First man to hit him, Tyrone Roy, the backup middle linebacker. And that ends the third period. Texas A&M, 45, TCU 3. From Red Grange to the modern grace of Olympian Tracy Corkins, the flavor and pageantry of all 21 men's and women's collegiate sports come alive at the NCAA Visitor Center. Come celebrate the magic moments in college sports at the NCAA Visitor Center, open year-round in Kansas City. This is the world, and this is Texas, the number one truck buying place in the world. You are here which means you need a truck. You could get a Ford Super Cab or a GMC Club Coupe Sierra, which has more standard horsepower and still gets better fuel economy, plus more shoulder and leg room, and an independent front suspension for a smoother ride. So if you're here, you belong here. Hurry in today and drive the best truck in Texas at your Texas Gulf Coast GMC truck team. Something's happening every day at Academy. That's the difference. Lowest prices every day. When you want to have fun, fun look good on the run. In the great, great outdoors, Academy is yours. Come into Academy and experience the difference. The lowest prices on quality sporting goods and activewear every day. Academy, the difference is the price. Tire stations bringing in a whole new warehouse way to buy tires. Sure, all these tires go here? Rack upon rack of brand name tires. Bridgestone, Michelin, Firestone, and more. We were just here. Must be practically giving them away. Tire Station's grand opening tire special. Not just a low price, it's a low warehouse price. That ought to hold them. Maybe. Tire Station, changing tires and the way you buy them. Tire Station, now at these locations. Start of the fourth quarter back here in Fort Worth, Dave Barnett and Grant Taft. Uh, we thought since this is uh, the final regular season game of the year, you have done so well in your rookie year as uh, as analyst on our game of the week. We do something special for you. And since this is also the... Not any water around since, there. No, no water. This is also the 15-year anniversary of, uh, of the most famous incident in Baylor football history. We've got a little present for you. <laughs> and uh, the con well, that's all you're going to do is hold it? No, no, no way. It looks pretty tasty to me. It's fast history. By the way, we promised to tell about that, and maybe we can in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think we'll have time All right. in, uh, in great detail <laughs> uh, to get into it. As uh, you look at Pulling Hill and Thomas, the big three offensive threats, and what they have done for the Aggies today. Preston remains the quarterback. I can't believe you didn't even taste it. Lowry hit hard at the 31 by Wesley. Okay, uh, 15 years ago, your team not having a good year. You got to fire them up to play Texas. Well, this story takes about an hour and a half to tell, but uh, in, well, we have that. I, I will, <laughs> I will be succinct. Uh, it's really the the most uh, maligned uh, story in college football. Every uh, year, I look up and some sports writer somewhere has uh, uh, written a story about it, and they don't have any of the facts. It actually was a um, psychological move, not a motivational move. Had a team that had a uh, very tough year in 1978. Uh, we started out as a really good football team and uh, had a lot of bad things happen and uh, sort of went down the tube. We're coming into the last game against the University of Texas. They're going to the uh, bowl game out in uh, what was then the Sun Bowl. And they're about a three or four touchdown favorite over us. And we needed to turn the week around and thus the season and maybe the entire future. And, and, and as a matter of fact, 
since that uh, 1978 Texas game, uh, we have been the second winningest team in the uh, Southwest Conference. But anyway, we did some things offensively and defensively that were good, and the players latched on to it. But then about midweek, I realized that psychologically they had been through so much that the first bad thing that would happen, they'd go down the tube. And so I came up with a story that I was going to use on a Thursday to, to teach them that it's important to do whatever it takes to be successful. Told the story about the two uh, fishermen on ice uh, catching uh, fish, and one was catching and the other was not. And the secret was that the one catching the fish kept the worms in his mouth to keep them warm. So the secret was you got to keep the worms warm. So Friday night before the game, it just occurred to me that we needed something fun. And so I decided the next day uh, to do something that was a little bit unheard of for me. So I got a, a night caller and carried him into the dressing room and actually put the thing in my mouth. The players went crazy because they thought I was crazy. And they played like they were crazy, and they were loose and relaxed. And we won the game, so that's the worm story. Well, well, didn't they have a point, though? I mean, <laughs> yes. They thought you were crazy. Yeah, if you'd have heard him on the sideline that day, Singletary uh, spilled the beans on me. He told Denny Freeman of the Associated Press after the game what I'd done, so it leaked out to the world. And my reputation has never been the same since then. Now, the worm was properly cleaned and maybe even salt and pepper. No, 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 but it was clean, uh, and and I did not swallow him. I just put him in my mouth and then took him out. And that boy right there doesn't need anybody to eat a worm for him to perform. Well motivated, yes, Rodney Thomas. Great well, I, I I waited patiently up here week after week all season, and I finally have the full story. Well, from the source, that's the capsule story. There's more. <laughs> Right. Well, anyway, we did win the ball game, uh, so that was the most important thing. Yeah, they, it's been a it's been a very solid program every year ever since then. You're right. Thomas takes him to the 11, first and 10. Thomas, right side, hit for a gain of one. That's good pursuit, good defense by TCU. 33,537 on hand today. Many of them, not coincidentally wearing the maroon jacket, still on hand. They're savoring every last minute of this. Their ninth victory of the year. And with some upsets, especially the one involving Ohio State. And that one in progress, you look for a &M to move up higher in the top ten. Flags down. Boy, if Boston College hangs on. What do you do? Florida State's got a loss. You put them back number one. Can't do Miami. They lost to Florida hey, State. What, what about Nebraska? Don't forget about Nebraska. They're undefeated. And uh, depends on what uh, West Virginia does today with uh, with Miami. Miami. You know, if West Virginia can knock off Miami, even though the rest of their schedule hasn't been real impressive. You can think hard about moving them all the way up from, I think, ninth. Because even though Nebraska is unbeaten, they will have beaten a better team than Nebraska has. Best teams Nebraska has beaten so far, UCLA. Big loss. West on Thomas. Best against the best. And Look. Royal West still playing hard. But yeah, I, I wanted to point that out. Uh, here's a football team that's down 45 to 3, and this defense has been banged around both the passing game and the rushing game today, and these guys are fighting their hearts out, led by Royal West. This is a great tribute to Pat Sullivan and his mentality. Uh, these guys are not giving up. They're not quitting. They've had some bad things happen, but by golly, they're hanging in there. Third and 19. Over the middle, it is caught. Short of the first down by Hayward Clay. They needed to get the one for a first and goal, and he has hit at the two, and it's fourth down. Good protection again by the uh, offensive line of Texas A&M. No one even close. Gets a late hit just uh, as he releases the ball. Clay, the big tight end, has had a good day. Watch Royal West. Why wow, he is a fighter, I'm telling you. Texas A&M sent in their short yardage team here with two tight ends. Thomas going wide. Rodney Thomas. 
Davis. Touchdown, Aggie. A good call by Toledo. Not much yardage to make for the first down. Sweep, get on the perimeter, you get blockers leading in front, and you've got just as good a chance to score as you have to make the first down. Good call. Venetulius, perfect all day. 52 to 3, Texas AM. Rodney Thomas. Going wide on a fourth and one, 13th touchdown of the year. The Aggie route continues. Our tape experts all year long, Steve, Brian, and Robert. Back of the bus now. The new Ram pickup features a frame design so strong it's been patented. Its available rear step bumper can pull 5,000 pounds by itself without the help of that frame. And the tie downs in back are so strong they can support the weight of the entire truck. We overbuilt this pickup because we were sure you'd never underwork it. New Dodge Ram, the rules have changed. We're taking Texas by the horns. So see your Texas Dodge dealer today. We're working hard every day, taking pride in what we do. Wendy is committed to bringing you lower prices every day. Our buyers always negotiate the lowest possible price, like power buys. By buying in volume and stocking up, we can drive a low price even lower and pass the savings on to you. That's a power buy. You'll find thousands of them at Winn-Dixie. They're part of our ongoing promise to bring you lower prices every day. 17, your order's ready. It seems as though the creators of value meals have forgotten that value isn't just how much you pay, but how much you get. Well, with Whataburger's new Whata Meals, you get Whataburger quality and value with the genuine Whataburger, Whata Chicken, Beef or Chicken Fajita, or Grilled Chicken Sandwich, each served with hot fries and a cold drink, making all other value meals seem of very little value. Whataburger Whata Meals at participating restaurants. Breakfast Whata Meals also available. 52 to 3, Texas A&M, 9 minutes and 52 seconds still to go in Fort Worth's Eamon Carter Stadium. Favored by 25. That proves conservative. A wire-to-wire -wire effort by the Aggies. And another unreturnable kick, but they decide to bring it out. We'll see if Jimmy Oliver made a good decision. Well, kind of with a wash, actually. He's near the 20 from the middle of his own end zone. Our Southwest Airlines storyline, Hill with a record-tying run, 94 yards. Pulling 9 to 15 for 202 and two scores. Glenn runs a punt return back for the second time this year, 55. And he also has his third interception. And Davis has the best rushing day of any back against the Aggies all year, 143. Those are good numbers against this uh, wrecking crew. Max Naki back at quarterback. Only a few series today after starting and throwing an interception to Glenn at the end of his first series. He keeps and he slides for five. He keeps on the plays. Remember, in college football, there's no rule on that front end slide. There Greg, is the pros. Greg Hill, by the way, with a 94-yarder. Not only ties for the best in AM history, it ties for the third best in conference history. The longest by Cobby Morrison and Jeff Jacobs, 95, and uh, by Chris Gilbert of Texas, the all-time record, 96, back against TCU in 67. Glenn, the best quarterback in this conference, maybe in the country, according to Pat Sullivan. Hard to argue with that after today. I would second that. Naki for Dickens. Undoubtedly, what you look at when you talk about Aaron Glenn is his job against not only Lloyd Hill at Texas Tech, holding him to three catches for 22 yards, but his job and everybody else's against Jeff Brom in Louisville last year held Tech to 169 total yards. They held Louisville to 189 total yards. That's 243 below the Cardinals per game average and 296 below the Red Raiders per game average. Over 
over the middle caught by Collins. And a very promising sophomore tight end made it to the 37 yard line and a TCU first down. He could still do some growing. 6'4, 215. McMullen in, uh, in the secondary making the stop. Very fine young player. Aggies always have him coming on, and he's one that uh, we'll look up in a year or two, and he'll be one of the premier defensive backs in our conference. In that Big Ten race, Ohio State now with a loss and a tie. Wisconsin with a loss to Jim Wacker's Minnesota team and a tie to Ohio State. And that's going to be movement by Barrett Robbins, the tackle. So if Wisconsin wins, guess who's in the Rose Bowl for the first time since the early 60s? Thanks to Michigan. And their 28-0 win over the Buckeyes today. Well, that is a big win for Michigan and a big loss for Ohio State. They have played very, very well throughout the year, and folks in Ohio sort of judge everything based on how well they play Michigan. Yeah, as tremendous as this year has been, this is what they'll remember. Unfortunately for John Cooper. Boy, wide open. Could have been six for Coy Woods, a backup fullback. Right in his hands, and he couldn't hang on. Texas to a man-to-man -man so that they could blitz their linebackers. That freed the uh, back out of the backfield. He was running free in the secondary had he been able to hang on to the football. So second and 15, eight minutes and 13 seconds. Knocky today, two out of seven. McLeod, his backup, four out of 20. Draw play, Davis. Flag is down. Davis to the 40 after avoiding the first contact by Chris Colon. And uh, we'll see the indication from Rogers Redding. Where they threw it, it is generally offensive holding, and that was the case here. Kevin Brewer, perhaps uh, the guilty party, the center against Larry Wallace, 64, the backup defensive end. Fourth quarter. Notre Dame 31. Chuck Wills. Another one of the outstanding TCU blockers. And today, notwithstanding, obviously no one overpowers the AM defensive line, but they've done a pretty good imitation of an offensive line that can overpower that line today. I think if there's one real bright spot uh, that uh, TCU would have today, it would be the play of their offensive line, the running of Davis has been very solid. Well, the Aggies traded allowing rushing yards for not allowing passing yards, and that obviously is not bad strategy against the TCU team that has done most of its damage through the air this year. Very wary of Naki having a hot day, and they've prevented it. He eluded the rush. He got it to Collins, who was hit immediately by Reggie Graham. Graham's played well in six starts this year, alternating with Larry Jackson, the inside backer. And he's back for one more year, junior from League City. Pretty good size linebacker. Very physical. 235 pounder. It'll be third and a bunch. About a half a mile, looks like, from here. Well, they got to get to the 48 from their own 19. And they moved again on that right side. Brandon Hickman, 77, back up tackle. So it's third and a bunch plus five. Coming up, of course, here on most of these Raycom stations, Southwest Conference Basketball, our Game of the Week series starting January 15th. Check your local listings. It should be an interesting basketball year with Texas the favorite, Texas Tech the defending tournament champion, and SMU the defending regular season champion. Crowd 
reacting to the Boston College Notre Dame score, which was just announced here. Naki avoids a safety. Well, that's some that's some balance and agility just to get that up as far as the 11-yard line and avoid two more points for a and Max Naki. I think uh, Max uh, did an excellent job getting free here, but uh, you can see the anticipation after he gets free. I think he thinks the Aggies are coming. That's always a pretty good assumption, isn't it? <laughs> yes, you can count on it. 46, Reggie Brown, the man who almost had the sack. Fortisman will kick from his own end zone under seven minutes to play. Billy Mitchell watches it hit and roll AM's way up to the 36. They'll have their best field position of the day. Just 25 yards, 641 to play, all AM. Sweetheart, do you mind? I love being in control. Don't you? Of course, it's not always easy when I've got the kids in the car and I'm running late. Hey, that's why I love this Exxon Express pay. I pull up, stick my card in here, pump my gas, my use supreme, grab my receipt, and I'm out of here. And with Express pay, I'm never more than two steps away from the car, which is important because you know kids. Hey, sweetheart. It's where the careers of naval officers are launched and where pleasure boaters come to cast away from it all. But Annapolis, Maryland is also a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank, which enables coastal properties to call on a depth of experience in financing, offers the overstreets everything from equity loans to mutual funds, and gives people a bank that puts greater financial power at their command. In Annapolis and in 1,900 other communities throughout our nation, because most of our flights are short, this is what our meals look like on Southwest Airlines. It's also what our fares look like. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Southwest Airlines has one of the best on-time records in the country. Mr. Smith, you're early. Just something to remember. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Moon starting to rise here in Fort Worth. Well, we have been blessed weather-wise today. It was pretty cold when it started out, and I'm sure in the full shadows on the field now, it's getting real chilly. But uh, for the first time, I think all year, the wind hasn't been a factor. And it has just been gorgeous. Leland McElroy, the redshirt freshman running back from Beaumont Central, gets the carry. Well, a changing of the guard, so to speak, earlier this week at Texas A&M with one of the most famous mascots in college football, Reveille, in this case, Reveille 5, being retired and on the way, Reveille 6, with a huge ovation upon the introduction of the newest model of Reveille. Reveille 5 serving well for a lot of years and getting up there. So handing the baton over. McElroy. McElroy will take it home. 35 yards. The third member of the three Musketeers. Thirteenth touchdown this year for McElroy. Three different ways. He's caught four passes for scores, returned two kickoffs for scores. And the on the ground. 59 to 3. The thing about it is there's always pressure on your defense when you have those three running backs. Watch this cut. Perfect balance. Ability to cut, scoop out with that left leg, and pull himself through the hole, and drove it into the end zone. Wow. Well, it just doesn't end. The onslaught continues. Our audio specialist, Mitch T. Bird. We're a part of the future. 
La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. You look like a person on the go, am I right? You're a VIP kind of guy, am I right? You don't have time for some fancy smancy breakfast, am I right? At La Quinta, they've customized a free continental breakfast for busy guys like yourself. In fact, this blueberry muffin was baked with you in mind. La Quinta, you're not staying at a hotel, you're staying with us. You've always considered your Texas Ford dealer the authority on toughness. And now you can consider them an authority on safety, too. In addition to rear anti-lock brakes, you'll now find a driver's side airbag standard in all F-150 pickups, including super cabs. One more reason why your Texas Ford dealer is the truck authority. Well, this is the highest scoring game for the Aggies since 65-6 to six, two years ago against SMU. It is far from their highest scoring game in their history and in fact it's not even that close to their highest scoring game ever against TCU that will not be a return for Woodley they had 74 against TCU in 86 against the Frogs in College Station 74 to 10 win the all-time record will continue to stand that from 1920 over poor unarmed Daniel Baker 110 Points racked up by the Aggies that day. I wonder if Daniel had any help at all. <laughs> Not enough. Third quarter now. Boston College still up by 14. SMU will close, it looks like, with their second game. And four and four, the third team tailback and pullback. 5'8", 185 pound junior from Tyler. Who is one of 37 different frogs to start at least one game this year? He carries that one with 536 and counting up to the 25. Well, uh, some perspective now on the Aggies. Obviously, they proved they can concentrate on a not so big game. If, if that's how you look at this week, sandwiched between Louisville and Texas, it was big because they had to have it for a share of the title. But you knew going in that it, it wasn't a fair match physically or in terms of overall talent. I think it uh, shows very clearly the maturing of this team, the excellent coaching job done by R.C. and his staff. Uh, they're playing the way they uh, uh, wanted to play. They are going to go out of this game with great momentum going into the Texas game next Thursday and uh, trying to be champions of the Southwest Conference for the third time. One more game and they can do it. Now if Texas takes care of their business and they were ahead 10 to nothing over Baylor second quarter. Looking ahead to that game. You know that already R.C. Slocum's got to be thinking about it. He wouldn't be human if he wasn't. Scott McLeod now back in at quarterback as that shuttle continues. He's driven out by Billy Mitchell at the 23. If you're Texas you got to hope for big plays from Pinckney and Adams. And they're capable. They are quite capable. Texas has improved an awful lot. Uh, they're not uh, in this team's caliber right now. They've got a lot of young players. Uh, this uh, team is uh, well experienced. They've got a good balance of some young players, but they've got uh, people that have played on championship teams, and uh, Texas is moving in that direction. Baylor's very similar. They've got a fairly young team this year as well. End over end kick. Down at the 48. That was Cole Colson, the backup punter, kicking for 29 yards. We continue our tour of the truck with Lee Friday, Brad Sheldon, Eric Josephson, Jim Feldman, Johnny Tyus, and David Hampton. This is the new Dodge Ram. 
And it comes with something full-size pickups have always been missing. A feature that makes handling loads easier when things turn slippery and can help you steer clear of danger. Because for the first time, the safety of anti-lock brakes is now available on all four wheels. New Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. We're taking Texas by the horns. So see your Texas Dodge dealer today. Bad grades. Poor attitudes. There's only one man who can turn them around. Boom Boom Jackson. Take notes. Deborah Martin reports on a new way of learning. Starting Monday, only on 11 News at 10. Because it's not just the news, it's the spirit of Texas. Don't be late. Nothing happens on the field until David Faulkner says go ahead. For five years, he has been our liaison on the field. And he lets the officials know when our commercial breaks are over and when they can signal for play to begin again. Third quarterback of the day, a stormy case and a give to Eddie Wallace. Redshirt freshman from spring. There's Case, also a redshirt freshman from Odessa Permian. He's been their holder all year, but this is uh, one of the few occasions where he has been anything other than a holder. He's just thrown one pass this year. It was intercepted, but he's six foot 190. He's got young people in front of him. That's his trouble, pulling and Preston are both just sophomores themselves. And Wallace lost one. Second and 11, 339 in the game. And flags down on the snap. Dave, Stormy Case uh, has uh, held coming into this game for 57 field goals and extra points and has not dropped or mishandled a snap. Uh, that also is a great uh, indictment, if you will, in a positive way of the deep snapper. Uh, that is a very important uh, tandem, the snapper and the holder. Snapper is Daryl Red, whose nickname is Jugs Machine because he's so automatic. AM's special teams, when you add them all up, returns, coverages, whole ball wax, as good as there maybe has ever been in the country. Wallace again, can you remember one team having the best punt returner in the country and best kick returner? And they don't have a special teams coach, it's all the assistants. And even R.C. Slocum all pitching in together. Well, a lot of that's R.C. Slocum. Uh, being a defensive coach, uh, he understands the importance of uh, your specialty teams playing well and giving your offense uh, important field position. And they have, year in and year out, as good a specialty teams as anybody in the country. And certainly this year, I think they have the best of anybody in the country. Well, more flags. The American Football Coaches Association, executive director, by the way, Grant Taft, selecting the Kodak All-America team, headed by Charlie Ward at quarterback, Marshall Falk and LaShawn Johnson, the running backs, Johnny Morton, David Palmer, J.J. Stokes, the wide receivers, and the rest of the offensive unit on the first team Kodak All-America unit. On the defensive side, which we'll show you in a moment, a couple of familiar names. On third and 16, still on the ground. And the carry by Shane Anthony with more flags at the 40. Face masking. Rest of the team, this is the defense, and you got Sam Adams as a junior. First team All-American defensive end. Congratulations to Sam. Trev Alberts, Kevin Patrick, Rob Waldrop, Bryant Young. And in the secondary, Aaron Glenn makes it. The senior corner, who is headed uh, what will undoubtedly be toward a selection in the first round of the NFL draft. In fact, Slocum yesterday paid him the ultimate compliment. When I asked him this, I said, I realize this is probably like asking you which of your kids you like best, but can you pick between Aaron Glenn and Kevin Smith, who started last year as a rookie for uh, the Cowboys, as the best cornerback you've ever had? And he said, no, I can't. At this point, Aaron is just as good. And John Stewart of SMU is the Kodak All-America kicker. Congratulations to John, who has had an excellent year, including a 55-yarder. 11 of 13 field goals before today. Wallace 
to the Frog 40. Dave, the American Football Coaches Association, of which I will take over in January from Charlie McClendon as the executive director, uh, has for many, many years selected an All-American team, and they are quite meticulous about it. It is uh, uh, recommended uh, from all corners of the United States, Division 1A, by coaches at the beginning of the season. They're tracked, and uh, uh, periodically those coaches will vote again on these uh, individuals. And they come down, and about a week ago, Mel Pullion of the AFCA uh, had a conference call with the coaches representing all the areas of the United States, and they selected this team. It's the most meticulously, I think, accurate uh, selection of an All-American team uh, anywhere in this country. Well, congratulations to all of them, and especially the three selectees from the Southwest Conference. Anthony Carey to the 35 as we near one minute remaining. 59 to 3, Texas A&M. Kirk McCarley finishing up his fifth consecutive year, hanging on to the statistical picture on our Raycom and Prime Network Game of the Week. Excellent work as well this year. Eddie Wallace. Eddie Wallace. And our spotter today, former TCU Sports Information Professional Charlie Durker, and also we thank Doug Smith, who has also helped us out up here in the booth, along with Tom Wilson doing spotting chores all season long, and Joe Kaleo, our stage manager. And of course, my good spotter, Dr. Bob of Kerrville, Texas. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Wallace. Royal West still not giving up. Wallace cuts back, though, and he's hit at the 30 on what should be the final play of this Texas A&M route of TCU. 21 straight in the conference to tie that record. 21 straight over TCU. They are 9-1, and one, headed to Kyle Field Thanksgiving night to try and wrap up another Cotton Bowl berth against Texas. Why Farm Bureau Insurance? They look at your total insurance needs. And develop what's best for you. When you have a claim, Farm Bureau works hard to get you back on the road, fast. If health problems interrupt your income, they can help keep you going. Helping you is what we do best. That's why people across America, from every walk of life, depend on Farm Bureau Insurance. Farm Bureau today. Over a thousand cars, trucks, and vans must go during the end of the year close out at Clear Lake Dodge. Hi, folks. I'm Tom Park. I want to talk to the custom van buyers out there. You know, the reason we're the custom van capital of Texas is because we give you more for your van purchasing dollar. Right now, you can buy a new 94 Mark III for only $18.9 with all this equipment. It's got the captain's chairs, mini blinds, rear sofa power, windows power, locks, tilt, cruise, cassette. I could go on and on for only $18.9. Why wait any longer? It's the end of the year closeout at Clear Lake Dodge. to you by the 1993 Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team, the all-conference team that's determined by you, the fans. By Southwest Airlines. By Nations Bank. By La Quinta Inn. By your Texas Dodge dealers. And by Dr. Pepper. Our Texas Dodge dealers player of the game is Aaron Glenn. Two big plays. 55-yard punt return touchdown. His second score of the year. And his third interception, which got the day underway for the wrecking crew defense very early. Aaron Glenn, our Texas Dodge Dealers player of the game. We return to Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth after this. Give a smoking strat to a guitar cat. You got the Megan's of rock and roll. You get a cold cord light, it'll be all right. Texas soul, you put 
every day. Our buyers always negotiate the lowest possible price, like power buys. By buying in volume and stocking up, we can drive a low price even lower and pass the savings on to you. That's a power buy. You'll find thousands of them at Winn-Dixie. They're part of our ongoing promise to bring you lower prices every day. To make Friends Fly Free perfectly clear, our lawyer insisted on doing this commercial. Friends Fly Free.